um, we would kindly ask you when the workshop starts to remove your camera uh, and mute yourself to, to ensure a good acoustic, except from the speakers, of course. And uh, you're always welcome to send your uh, questions, messages in the chat, which we constantly monitoring myself and Zvetla from uh, Nereus team. Okay, I think maybe we can start. Um, I would kindly ask uh, from uh, from Svetla to start to record the meeting. Thank you very much. So, hello to everyone and uh, welcome to the virtual workshop EO for Geoskills Development in Earth Observation and Copernicus User Uptake, the present and the future of coastal and maritime sector in the Azores. My name is Margarita Krisaki and I am the Communication and Project Officer for uh, Nereus. And today I will moderate this uh, workshop together with Arthur Gill from the University of the Azores. Um, the, objective of, the objective of the workshop, as you have already received from the invitation, would be first to identify the current and future needs of uh, earth observation and information skills in coastal maritime uh, economic activities for the Azores, and secondly, to explore how the eo 4 geo solutions can fit into the needs of the local and regional authorities, uh, the private sector, uh, academia, and other key maritime uh, stakeholders and experts. The workshop is uh, organized jointly by Nereus uh, and the University of the Azores in the framework of eo 4 geo an, an Erasmus Sector Skills Alliance project for education and training. To begin with, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the Vice Rector of the University of the Azores, Professor Gabriela Queiroz, for the opening remarks. Are you ready, Gabriela? Yes. And sorry, before that, uh, I would kindly ask, apart from Gabriela and the, uh, the speaker, uh, to remove your cameras and uh, mute yourself, please, so we can have a good acoustic. Thank you very much. Please move on, Gabriela. <laughs> Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, on behalf of the uh, rector of the Azores University, it is my pleasure to give some brief words uh, at the beginning of this event. Uh, so I start by welcoming all the speakers and participants of the EO4GEO high level uh, workshop, uh, which is organized by Nereus and the University of the Azores. So, uh, as uh, Vice Rector of Science and Technology of the Azores University, 
Of course, that uh, this is an issue that uh, I think is uh, of most important, not only for the Academy, but of course for the Azor region. Uh, the Earth observation issues are uh, very important for a region uh, where we have uh, uh, specific uh, uh, land and maritime uh, questions, and uh, the the use of the uh, Earth observation uh, issues, the tools, are very important in, in this region. And so, the Azores University has, uh, for a long time, dedicated not only uh, on research, but uh, on the innovation, on the education of these matters. So, I won't be long. I want uh, only to wish uh, a very good work during these presentations. Uh, we have, uh, I can see a long list of participants, which is very good, which is very important. Uh, I know that uh, along the, the, the presentations, very important issues will be discussed. Uh, I am very sorry that I won't be able to be all the time uh, present, uh, but I have other commitments. But even because my formation is for geology and volcanology, uh, it is uh, these matters are, are very important. And uh, during all the work I have been done, uh, my research, uh, Earth observation issues uh, have been uh, always present in, in what I developed. Um, I also want to to, in, to stress the importance of the Copernicus Academy for the, the University of the Azores. We have been a member since the, the beginning. And so um, I want to uh, pass to all the other participants to, to, to speak and so uh, have a very fruitful uh, workshop. Um, and uh, I'm sure that uh, at the end of the day, uh, we all have more uh, important uh, uh, news and, uh, and uh, it will all uh, be very uh, well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Queiroz, uh, for your opening remarks. Uh, and now I would like to invite Ms. Roya Yazi, the Secretary General of NEREUS, the Network of European Regions Using Space Technologies, which is one of the two organizations which uh, co organize this workshop. Uh, Roya, the, the stage is yours. <laughs> you are muted. Uh, you are muted. And please let me know if you like me, if you wish to upload your presentation. Good morning, everybody. Um, a warm welcome from my side. I'm very glad to be here to share uh, the experience of this workshop. I prepared some slides to introduce the Reus to some of you who don't know us yet and uh, to give a little bit background for those who know us better. So I should be able to share slides. Can you see them? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Perfectly fine. So, who are we? NEREO stands for Network of European Regions. And the most important uh, uh, is our member regions, the NEREOS regions that are our capital, our main protagonist, and they share the governance of the um, network. We have currently 23 region. The Azores is a founding region, very active on our platform, and we have already organized many uh, workshops and joint initiatives together. And I really thank the Azores community. Um, you are on our platform, a very strong space player, and we are proud to have you as a member. When we say regions, what do we mean? Whom do we mean? Well, um, the, there is an administrative layer and we're usually linked to the economic ministry and the Azores, um, it's the secretariat responsible for maritime affairs. But we address the whole players of the innovation. Somebody is not muted. Could you all mute yourself? I'm hearing. Okay. 
Um, all the innovation of the the innovation triangle, universities, research center, industry, and SME. I'm hearing somebody's uh, find this disturbing. Could you please uh, mute sorry. yourself? Yes, Sven, Sven, could you mute yourself, please? Okay. Thank you. Second group are the associate partners, and um, we have already also um, some associate partners from the Azores, Edisoft, for instance, and research organizations. Um, we work on three main columns. Um, we offer regions a, a platform for political dialogue and advocacy towards relevant space player and European institution. It's a joint platform to develop common positions and advocate them towards the political level. Second very important column is um, a platform for interregional cooperation and partnerships, networking, getting to know each other and building strong model projects, showing what are the capabilities of regions and their expertise. And the third column is um, a new trends, public outreach, space, bringing space exhibitions to regions. Um, uh, for instance, we will soon have a, for our region um, a photo exhibition, space for our planet, a photo exhibition um, where uh, um, you can uh, learn more about examples, how concrete space uses contribute to bring forward sustainable development goals. And all of our partners will be able to bring this um, exhibition to their region and show it to stakeholder and discuss with them. Um, why join this as a, maybe at the start, at the outset of this workshop? Um, why did Nereus join this Erasmus Plus funded initiative? Um, why is education and training for us important? Um, Second column is interregional cooperation and partnership of our network activities, and we offer a platform for our members to get involved in uh, our project activities. We support them in the whole project circle. We advise them. We help them to build consortia. In some limited strategic cases, Nereus um, itself gets involved because we want to connect our members with the project activities or or um, it has the project we get involved has a model character for region and they can learn from this. Um, with, with the uh, uh, Erasmus Plus funded initiative, um, we think uh, we can bring forward our mission that concerns education and training. Um, Reus is about the use of space. Um, uh, 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 promoting and making better use of space systems. You can only make good use of space system if you have a well educated and trained workforce. And uh, this is where it starts with awareness and well education. And joining the Erasmus Plus funded initiative, we wanted to make sure that the knowledge that the findings that the outcomes of this Erasmus Plus funded project where um, uh, education and training in the earth observation and geo information sector is innovated, is improved, gets to our region that to ensure a, a strong and, and um, in-depth regional rollout. We organized so far five uh, in, uh, outreach workshops. Uh, we, we are going to organize five outreach uh, workshops. Um, Two we have organized in uh, 2019. We started in France in the region of Aquitaine at the aerospace campus. Um, and we had a political event at the committee of the region addressing broadly all regions that are present in Brussels and uh, to the institutional level. This year we will have another following the workshop with uh, the Azores, we will have um, a set of two other workshops with our Polish partner in the region of Matsovia, the region around Warsaw, and the region of Podkarpatki in the south of um, Poland. And um, 
here you have, uh, uh, it's about community building. It's about sharing. It's about models. Here you see our partners in France. Um, here you see our partners and the activities in Brussels. We work very closely with the committee of the region to ensure that also more regions get to know our activities um, and that uh, we are also politically closely linked to the representatives of the committee of the region. Um, why do we think or why we do consider regions important when it comes to education and training? And why do we think education and training is important to regions? Um, when we think about the space system, about satellite based services, we have to bear in mind that regions are a key user group. Almost 90% of um, satellite based services address in one way or the other the public sector are better for environmental management, coastal management, implementation of public policies, monitoring of agriculture subsidies. The, the list could be long. I, I recommend you to have a look at our flagship publication, Copernicus for Regions, um, that is on our um, um, a website where you can find many examples how regions already use Copernicus very successfully in public sector domains. We portrayed eight, but there are more. Um, we see regions in two respects. We see them as a user, but we see them also as a economic and political decision maker to promote favorable conditions for the use and uptake of um, uh, space based services and products. They are responsible for economic policy. They are responsible for innovation policy and space is a very, very important ingredient for these. And we want to make sure regions are in where and they can enshrine space in these policy um, uh, domains and, and programs. Um, we think regions are a privileged scale whenever to identify needs and define societal needs and growth opportunities, which are needed to further develop our space infrastructure. Um, we see regions as the only level to link space with territorial and regional development, where you can really find tangible examples, where you can look into the legislations um, the regions are um, uh, uh, responsible for, like environmental legislation, implementation of EU directives, where you can really show um, how space can bring in benefit. Um, and to make all this, um, you need a good education and training base. You need to understand what can I do with this system and how do I best do it and how can I read and better um, literacy of satellite imagery, better literacy and understanding what is Earth observation and Copernicus imagery capable of and what to do. It's about transforming the, the process of transforming um, the information from the satellite imagery to knowledge, to information useful for the public sector. Um, today, uh, our workshop is focused on the maritime sector. And um, we think Earth Observation Copernicus brings a key benefit to the maritime sector. When we want to improve coastal management, water quality, um, improve fisheries, we need the information from the Sentinel satellites. And um, we hope to uh, launch with this um, uh, workshop also an, a discussion, a reflection, how better to integrate Earth observation and Copernicus into maritime strategies. Um, I like to show you the, the website from the eo for geo initiative, so you can always find the la latest updates there or, or things that interest you. And I wish to um, give the floor to Margarita. Thank you very much, Soroya, for this uh, opening remarks. And um, 
Next, I would like to invite Mr. Francisco Wallenstein from the Azores Mission Structure for Space and who represents the Azores region in Areus to share with us his presentation on the Azores space activity. Uh, Francisco, if you are ready, um, uh, you can you can share your uh, you can share your presentation. Margarita, will you will you? Yes, will you yes, share? yes. I will do it. Don't worry. Okay, so shall I ask the next slide, please, once I need it? Yes, don't worry. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. No worries. Just so, give me one moment. As, uh, Margarita, here you are. As Margarita said, I'm, the, I'm here on behalf of the regional government. I've been for quite a while to represent the, the person representing the regional government in, of the Azores in, um, in Rioj. And it's a pleasure to be here in this important initiative by by um, by uh, Nadeus and the University of the Azores, uh, considering Earth observation and education. Uh, Margarita, can you put it in a, in a presentation mode, please? Um, so, in in my endeavor, uh, being being um, being related to uh, uh, space activities in the Azores, I have been working on the, the promotion of Earth observation mm -hmm. and and and, um, and uh, its its uptake in in the Azores. And uh, Azores has been quite an attractive location for space for quite a while. In 2005 already, as I identified the interests of having uh, a tracking station for, for the, the launchers in, in uh, Guiana, in French Guiana. So um, they, they approached the regional government to put a structure there. For, it was a provisional one, but then the regional government identified that it was interesting to make it bigger. So the first uh, asset re related to space in the Azores was this station, the tracking station in Santa Maria, that grew to quite a, a bigger, a bigger teleport with with uh, other uh, infrastructures, namely a Galileo infrastructure and a Umetsat station, and um, also producing some some um, services regarding the the use of Copernicus data for maritime activities, actually for monitoring the, the North Atlantic uh, area for, for oil spills. Um, then in 2010, Raeje, please. Uh, yeah. Raeje is an important project that was established in Santa Maria as well. Um, it's a geodetic uh, network with, between space and the Azores, and it's, it's growing uh, in Santa Maria and it will spread to, to flourish. So also re regarding the interest of the Azores, considering space can set activities, which is a competition with with the students from high schools, uh, producing satellites to to producing yeah satellites in the size of a of a, um, a juice can. Um, they they did quite of quite a number of these uh, these contests in Santa Maria, which which is quite interesting, which motivates students towards the space activities. So next slide, please, uh, Margarita. Um, so by becoming, by being such a, an a attractive location in space, of course, we, we needed to network these interests and to, to attract things here. So the Azores became member of Nereus once it was uh, founded. So we are a founding member since 2018 uh, and eight. And also later on, almost 10 years later, we became also a member of the Copernicus Relay the Azores government uh, in 2017, together with the, the Copernicus Academy of, of University of the Azores. With this, we intended to attract further further activity in the Azores uh, for, for, for space-related activities. Uh, Nereu is not only Earth observation and Copernicus more related to Earth observation. So next slide, please. Um, by doing this networking and in integrating these two networks, uh, projects started coming to the Azores regarding space activities, and the first one of them, I think, Artugil, who is present, was related to it. I wasn't then; well, I wasn't working with space activities then. Doris Net, which started in 2010 and ended up providing uh, regional contact offices for for promoting Gmesh, which was at the time the the Copernicus uh, wasn't called Copernicus. 
further uh, further down the the chronology we in 2015 was my first activity promoting copernicus with nereus and eza there was a, 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 a workshop to identify what was the use of earth observation in the Azores in local and regional authorities. And uh, we ended up concluding that lots of people were aware of Copernicus and what, what its potential was, but not really a lot of people were using it. Quite an interesting organization. It was my first uh, organization with, uh, with Rails and it was a pleasure to do so. Uh, next slide, please which led to further projects as well. One of them was a Copernicus training information session together with Lisbon. The first part of this Copernicus training information session was in Lisbon and the second one in Ponta Delgada. And um, it promoted different applications of Copernicus and in the Azores we had the uh, uh, maritime activities and also financing for Copernicus um, uh, applications. And later on in 2019, a large organization we together with Mercator Ocean, we did a training session for Copernicus for outermost regions, uh, maritime regions. Um, it was a large event in Fayal in Orta, and uh, Nereus was also involved with this to try to promote the uptake of Copernicus in mar maritime activities and also to, to train, to provide some training of, of Copernicus to, to, to people interested in most of them in academy and um, local and regional authorities. Not really for training, more, both of the sessions, uh, it's some of something that I have uh, concluded in these training uh, Copernicus sessions that they are not really very practical courses, which is something that might be uh, interesting to approach in terms of, of uh, education of, of Earth observation applications. Uh, next slide, please, Margarita. So in the meantime as well, in 2017, we managed to organize the regional, the regional entities dealing with mar maritime affairs to enter this pre-commercial procurement uh, call for Horizon 2020 and which has just finished last year, it was a success to develop some applications of Earth Observation Copernicus um, to maritime activities. And we even had here in the, in the, in the Azores the um, test phase of the, of the prototype uh, found for, for, um, for um, marine protected areas monitoring, I believe. I think Fabio might be talking about this later on in the, in the program. And uh, as well, we entered the framework partnership agreement uh, for for uh, for Copernicus uptake during during a period, and then uh, we stepped out because we thought that maybe Air Center uh, would be a, a better a better uh, entity to to mobilize the the communities and promote the, the programs here funded. So we we entered it and were in this in this project for two years, but then we, we stepped out. Uh, next slide, please. Rita? Yes, one moment, because I think it stuck. Okay. So I can go on. Um, so within within this period as well, Nereus and Eza managed to publish two two very interesting compilations of, of uh, Earth observation applications in regions. And uh, fortunately enough, we have the Azores present in the, both of them with so many with so many publications. But we are present in both of them, which means that we are using it. There are teams using it, and 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 it's quite interesting these publications that should keep on promoting uh, examples. They are quite useful to promote among among uh, entities that you want to show what, what Earth Observation can do for us. Um, it's a very interesting way of, of uh, promoting uh, Copernicus. Next slide, please. Which brings me, will bring me to the present action, Margarita. Um, we have recently managed to include in the, our space um, uh, smart specialization strategy, we have recently managed to include space in the revision of this strategy. 
uh, which is, was quite a success. It's important because it's something that will manage with, that will allow us in the future to 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 fund and to promote projects, uh, including space. And this means also Earth observation. And um, we are developing the Azores Space Strategy, which is in course now. It's going to present to be presented publicly in in November, uh, late October, in the beginning of November, to be to get together um, uh, uh, the public the public um, contributions from all stakeholders in the meantime we are going to promote it internally in the in the regional government and with within companies and in November it will be made available publicly and and we expect to receive uh, uh, contributions to to provide the the orientation that the strategy needs for for to encompass all the interests of relevant stakeholders and for this we need to enlarge our team which which is something that i've been fighting for 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 quite a while so to finalize i just want to to mention uh, my my personal belief that my future action or the future action of promoting earth observation and copernicus uptake in users needs to focus on education and this these two education and earth observation will be two important parts of the space strategy and they are on the back of my mind uh, in, in promoting this uptake. And I, I really am uh, doing efforts to start to start um, doing some initiatives uh, at uh, uh, professional and professional training schools to to to, in, to introduce uh, Copernicus applications in the, in the curricula of, of uh, professional training. Which I believe will be will be a good contribution for for the uptake in the education system. Sorry to have taken a bit longer. <laughs> <my name. laughs> So thank you very much for this interesting presentation, uh, Francisco. And now, uh, before going to our first panel, I think it's really necessary for the people that they don't have a background on what is EO4GEO project uh, to give you a short overview uh, on the EO4GEO initiative, how it started very briefly, what is about, to whom it's addressed, and how you can benefit from that. And uh, therefore, based on that, we would really like uh, to uh, invite you to stay to the end of this workshop because these questions will be answered actually uh, during the workshop and in the final section. So allow me to share very quickly my presentation and then we move on to the first panel. Okay, I hope you can see it. Okay, perfect. So, um, the Earth observation and gene formation sector is a rapidly developing field, as you know, with technological changes driven by uh, big Earth observation data, mostly coming from uh, Copernicus. The program uh, obviously offers tremendous opportunities for innovation, growth and jobs, but at the same time it requires the newly graduates and the employed workforce to acquire new skills uh, needed for the market. Therefore, uh, in uh, 2016, the Commission has developed the blueprint sectorial cooperation on skills to boost skills and education between key stakeholders like businesses, uh, such as businesses, education providers, public authorities and institutions. In this way, they encourage the uptake of, the, of Copernicus data. Now, this blueprint has been piloted on six sectors where the sector space data geoinformation is one of them. In the framework of this pilot sector, uh, the EO4GEO is an Erasmus Plus Sector Skills Alliance project implemented by 26 partners from 13 EU countries. Uh, so a very diverse um, audience of, uh, of uh, partners. The initiative aims at supporting the upskilling and reskilling of the workforce in the earth observation geoinformation sector and foster the uptake and integration of earth observation uh, and uh, geoinformation data and services in a broad range of application domains, which we will explain later on. How, how, what is this about? The initiative as such is significant because for the first time it brings together all these experts from academia and public and private sectors 
who bring their experience and expertise to define and apply innovative solutions for education and training actions in the sectors. What is important to highlight here is that the Alliance has a strategic role in the long-term sustainability of the project outcomes, as well as in the provision of uh, new products and services, something we will, that we will also highlight later on the discussion. Now, uh, how all this experience and expertise has been translated into tangible outcomes. The eu 4 geo partners have developed an ecosystem of innovative collaborative, collaborative tools which can be used independently or combined depending on the user's profiles and needs. As you can see from the slide, uh, starting with the body of knowledge or the BOC as we used to call it, it's a tool or a lexicon which offers a common language of the sector to describe in a unique way the rich collection of earth observation geoinformation concepts and their associated skills. Now, based on this book, the Alliance has developed a plethora of other tools to support public authorities, academia, companies, small and medium enterprises, and uh, other earth observation geoinformation experts. To mention just a few, these are the job offer tool, the occupational profile tool, and the curriculum tool. Of course, in the second part of the workshop, the partners will explain further how we can use and benefit uh, from these tools. But there are more here for geo solutions for you and your organizations. The project provides a set of training material and learning outcomes that specifically highlights the needs of educators in the field of earth observation and geoinformation. This material sets a focus on introductory themes and current technologies that are in demand, such as integrated applications, uh, smart cities, and climate change. In addition, um, the training actions ranging from webinars to workshops some and summer schools are built on what we call business or working processes and occupational profiles uh, with the objective to provide the knowledge and skills needed to perform tasks in the earth observation geoinformation sector. And in this slide, you see how the EO4GEO partners have developed what, what is the kind of approach they followed to develop this material. Moving on, uh, it's important to highlight that all these EO4GEO tools are developed um, to improve the working processes of the public and the private sectors. As this slide shows, uh, this can support public authorities to upgrade the skills of their staff, training and education providers to create and find educational offer offers at all levels, companies, employees and students to explore which curriculum vitae meets the most recent needs of the business world in the sectors, or what are the right skills uh, for employers to hire the most appropriate professionals in the sector. To this end, uh, the first part of the workshop will explore what are the current and future working skills needed for the coastal marine earth observation activities in the Azores. To get uh, a good overview of the situation, we have invited four representatives for, from each one of these groups to share their views in this respect. In the second part now of the workshop, uh, after the coffee break, the EO4GEO partners uh, will show us to whom these tools are addressed, how you can use them, and what are the benefits. In this regard, I strongly encourage public authorities, companies and universities, as well as individuals and students to stay till the end of the workshop and discuss with us, chat with us how the solutions can be applied uh, to your organizations and if they are useful for you. More information about the project you can find on our website. Um, please feel free and also follow us in the Twitter account. Please feel free to uh, put your questions in the chat and then we will uh, share it with the, with the speakers. Uh, don't forget to mute yourself to ensure the good acoustic. And uh, moving on now to, to, to the first uh, panel, um, I would like to invite first uh, Mr. Arthur Gill, who is uh, co-moderating the workshop with me and who is a geospatial research engineer at IVAR 
research, the Research Institute for, uh, for Volcanology and Risk Assessments uh, from the University of the Azores to start the introduction of the first panel. Hello. Arthur, if you are ready. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, good morning all. I want to thank you all for your participation. Uh, I want to introduce you first uh, the, the Regional Director of Sea Affairs, uh, Mr. Pedro Desneves, who, who is originally um, a captain uh, uh, from the Portuguese Navy, and his background is in military uh, uh, naval sciences. And please go for it, Mr. Pedro Desneves. Good morning for all. It, it is a true honor to participate in this workshop. I'm the new regional director for, for Sea Affairs of Azores Government. Also pleasure to speak about maritime special, uh, special planning of Azores. Next slide, please. In this picture, in the, in the first image, you can see the proposal, Portuguese extended uh, continental self proposal that, and we are waiting for decision of United Nations. I think that decision is late, a little bit late. On the second image, you can see Azores, the center of the world. Azores is 2,000 kilometers from Canada mainland and 1,500 kilometers from Portuguese mainland. You can see that Azores is the outmost, uh, outmost region of the uh, European Union. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Challenges and threats for Azorean maritime space. Our challenges, insularity and remoteness, extensive maritime area, you, high diversity of marine environments, many human uses and activities, economic dependency on traditional sector as shipping, fisheries, and tourism. Threats we face, climate change and variability, natural catastrophes and coastal erosion, over exploitation of natural resources, increasing growth of tourism, increasing maritime traffic, proliferation of non-indigenous species and marine litter. Next slide, please. What is the, the mission of the regional the director of uh, for sea affairs? Valuing the source sea by promoting the, the sustainable use of resources, striving to maintain the magnificence and ensuring the natural sustainability. How, how can we support our decisions and our policies? Using coastal planning and management, assessment of marine environment status as maritime strategy framework, framework directive, water frame directive, environment impact assessment. Also uses a natural resources management, sustainable economy, natural conservation as maritime protected areas and restrictions to fisheries, supporting to monitoring and surveillance of maritime space. Next slide, please. A little description of maritime spacing plan. What is the maritime spacing special planning is a public press, uh, public process of analyzing and allocating the special and temporal distribution of human activities in the maritime space to achieve ecological economical and social objectives what are the competent authorities a sort of subdivision Madeira subdivision a mainland and extended the continental self subdivisions. What, what are the instruments? A situation, situation plan and allocation plan. The allocation plan is a small situation plan. The situation plan identifies the current and potential temporal and special distribution of human uses and also natural and coastal values. Special dimension. As you see at the first, uh, at the second slide, our maritime space zone is is very large. You can see internal 
internal maritime waters and territorial, uh, territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, continental shelf, including around 200 and nautical miles. Next slide, please. Online, online tools. We have web portal and geoportal Sigmaro source. The collaborative uh, geographic information system planning tool. Not, we don't have any concerted link with this company now. We only use it, the, this company, to make our planning. At this moment, we don't work with this company. Human activities and human uses and activities for a lot of things tourism, navigation, scientific resources, fisheries, ports and marina, blue technology, aquaculture, mineral resources, and other uses and activities. Next slide, please. Steps and current stand, uh, steps and current status. We started pre planning 2017 until 2018 with the University of Azores and the Hydrography, Portuguese Hydrography Office. In 2019, uh, until 2020, we make the planning. And now we are waiting for an environmental strategic evaluation. After that, we'll make a plan. We will make a, a consultative. Uh, we we'll make the proposal to a consultative, uh, cons uh, consultative uh, to, to a committee. Then we make a public consultation, and then we must put this plan to uh, to a regional assembly. Perhaps, perhaps I think in the. In the end of this year, we'll uh, finish this process. Next slide, please. Our take home lessons. Maritime space plan is ever reliant on data with a high quality, spatial and temporal re resolution for a effective scenario, analysis, and associated zoning. What is the main the main challenge, lack a high resolution near surface spatial temporal data for a source maritime space, especially coastal, coastal areas, regional and local scales, limitations of the available data, a currency of remote sensing data, clim climate constraints as cloud cover, limited and, and, and unevenly distributed collection of environmental observations, Data sets required in, in situ validation. Benefits from user uptake. A broad scale oceanographic information can be applied to environmental monitoring, prediction of optimal condition for future uses. Example agriculture, fish farming, and maritime facilities. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Margarita, thanks. The current and uh, future needs general information. Our core needs high spatial and temporal resolution data, free and read and ready to use data, human and technical financial resources needed, no money, no funny, need to validation form in, in situ data infrastructure, applications of remote sensing image. Satellite remote sensing include a very high resolution synthetic aperture radar and other complementary methods. Next slide, please. You can see an image of chlorophyll density at northwest of the source. Next slide, please. Now, current and further. Uh, Current and future, uh, future needs and specific information. We need characterizations of maritime space, environmental data, seabed mapping with the collaboration of hydrographic, Portuguese Hydrographic Institute to make coastal zone management. 
We need monitoring of hydrodynamic conditions of coastal areas to support environmental management. Next slide, please. We need also human uses and activities related impacts to the marine environment. Prediction of environmental conditions to support zoning of protected areas. Environmental assessment and monitoring to support maritime. I forgot the name uh, to support maritime. To support maritime strategy framework directive. And we need also to build our capacity a better user uptake. As a other slide, please. What is the coparents limitations for us? A higher resolution of coparents system and more human resources to to monitoring the our activities. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Fair winds and foxes to all of you. I want to thank Dr. Gil for this opportunity and for his invitation, and to Professor Anna Martins for her advices and knowledge about settled image. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Pedro, for your uh, insightful presentation. Uh, and moving on, I would like to welcome Mr. Adam Sierska from uh, Matsovia region and Mr. Anthony Yes from Potkaparki region to share with us their views on the important role that education in earth observation geoinformation uh, sectors plays in Poland. Um, and what are their expectations in organizing the next EO4GEO workshops on the 21st and the 22nd of October in Poland? Please, because we are very late in time, keep your timing. It's five minutes each. Uh, and uh, please, uh, if you are ready, you can share your presentations. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your question. Just let me start sharing my presentation. Okay, I hope everyone can see it. It's all right. Yes, yes. If you can also put it in a full view, but otherwise oh, it's fine. View. If it... Great, thank you again. So, Mazovian experience. I will tell shortly what we are doing here in Mazovia in terms of course, earth observation, geographic information sector. So, first of all, in order to ensure access to special data and to promote, for example, Copernicus data, Mazovian special information system was made where over 700 of information layers are presented. Copernicus derived the data among them, of course. But as far as education, training and promotion of space products is very important for all region activities, it's still not enough and we are trying to find or develop a popular products that are based on mostly Copernicus data. So one of that product um, will be developed in short future with the European Space Agency funding. Uh, you can see the long name of the project on the screen, but the main goal we want to achieve is to get tool for automatic actualization of landscape values tool based on earth observation data and then after it kicked off and tested in our region we are hoping to extend the usage of the tool to the entire polish territory the project started in the end of april and the duration of the work shall not exceed 24 months another chance to get trendy and popular products, successful products, is establishing a business incubator of the European Space Agency in Poland. Of course, along with our 
partners from another regions, Podkarpacki region among them, and other participants. We are doing that in order to create new companies with that will offer products and services dedicated to the space industry. Also, last year we started a research project in cooperation with best Mazovian universities and research institutions that will cover all small village issues in our region. More, one of the products of the project will be a smartphone application for local farmers based on Copernicus data, which integrated maps of humidity grade, actual NDVA indicator, soil fertility analysis, physical and chemical properties of soil, nutrients requirements, and so on. The concept and technical assumptions are ready. We intend to start a technical dialogue with potential contractors in the near future, and the project should be ready in 2023. And finally, what do we expect about our workshop in October in Poland, 21st, 22nd October, please save the date. The registration is open. We invite you and we encourage you to participate. We are hoping to integrate in that time with students, researchers, entrepreneurs. We are hoping to get more ideas and examples of earth observation based tools and materials, find new opportunities for implementations, interact with EO for geo specialists and experts and establish relationships. So that is all for now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you very much for your great uh, for your great insight. And maybe Anthony, if it's ready, he can also share his uh, presentation and his okay. views on. Thank you very much, Anthony. Good morning, everyone. Can you see my slides? Yes. That's okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. My, na my name is Antoni Jesz. I work at the Marshall Office of the Podkarpacki Region. Podkarpacki is a member of Nereus since 2017. Before uh, we answer what we want to achieve in organization event EO4GEO project in October in Poland, I'd like to present the Podkarpacki Region in a few words. Podkarpacki is one of the 16 regions of Poland situated in the southeastern part of the country, bordered with Ukraine and uh, Slovakia. And the region lives over 2 million inhabitants. The region is rich in cultural monuments, beautiful nature, unique in Europe, for example, East Carpathian's Biosphere Reserve. But this is the one side of the region. The other side is a friendly place to develop entrepreneurship. There are over 160,000 business entities of various size operating, from small family business uh, to large enterprises employed thousands of employees. One of the identified and, and developed smart specialization in the region's smart specialization strategy is aviation and uh, aeronautics. But Karpatsky is only one region in Poland with such specialization. One of the main players of this area is Aviation Valley Cluster, a world famous cluster of, of the aviation industry associating over 180 different economic entities employing over 25 thousand employees. Cluster cooperates with the world leaders in the aviation industry, is active in the education and research sectors. The region's universities and vocational schools play an important role if, in the developing of knowledge and skills necessary to implement smart, smart specialization in the region. Over 45,000 students study in 20 universities in the region, including, among others, Rzeszów University of Technology, where one of the courses of study is aviation and astronautics. It's also worth paying attention to the Podkarpacki Science and Technology Park, an initiative of the region, where uh, the, uh, situated the headquarters of companies 
uh, of the aviation, automotive, and chemical industries. Many startup companies operate here, also from the space industry and robotics, drones, etc. Podkarpacki is one of the regional leaders that participates in creating business incubator of the European Space Agency in our region. Nereus is an advisory partner of the Podkarpacki region in the field of creation ISA Big uh, Regional uh, Center. Uh, this data show the background of the situation of the Podkarpatsky is in the field of using satellite data and space technologies. In 2018, together with the Polish Space Agency branch in Czech, Podkarpatsky region asked the local governments if they were interested in, in obtaining and using data from Earth observation for their purposes. Almost 70% 70, 70 of them that responded to the survey said that had never used an Earth observation data before, but uh, almost all of them are interested in participation in training and gaining knowledge how to use data. Why don't they use satellite data? Lack of knowledge, lack of skills, and high cost of obtaining data are the main obstacles. But analyzing tools developed in the EO4G project, we can see the necessity of conducting the learning process, how to use Earth observation data, and what skills are needed for using this data by business entities, local and regional governments, universities, in their work in statutory tasks. There is a little knowledge how to use this data. It is necessary to build new skills needed of the space and geoinformatic sector in Poland. The four we expect the, uh, the organization, the EO4G workshop in Rzeszów in October, will accelerate the learning process, give a new impulse for using the data, and will help create skills needed in changing economy. It will allow, for example, to establish contacts between universities in the field of introduction, the topic of using Earth observation data and new skills into curricula. It will help business entities to find employees with the appropriate qualification. We hope that the tools developed on the EO4G project will support the learning process and create new skills necessary to remain competitive in the changing economy, in innovative education and training activities. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, um, Adam and, um, and Anthony, for your great insights, and we really look forward to cooperating with you uh, in autumn. By the way, uh, for the audience, it's a good opportunity to register uh, to attend to our virtual meetings in autumn. I will uh, insert the link and I will share it with you in the chat. Um, and uh, we hope to see you all very soon uh, there. Uh, now, closing the roundtable uh, regarding the views on local and regional authorities about the needs, uh, the, 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 the needs in working skills in these two sectors. Um, it's, um, we are very much interested to see also what academia and the private sector say from their side. Uh, and for this reason, I, I back to you, Arthur, uh, to introduce the, the next speakers. Hello again. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you, Professor Anna Martins. Uh, she's a good friend also. Uh, she's professor at the Ocean and Fisheries Department at the Okeanos Research and Development Group at the University of the Azores. She's a marine biologist by background and, uh, and a oceanographer by training and huge experience. She, she's the main pioneer of using remote sensing technologies in oceanography in the Azores. Uh, and, and she will discuss uh, local and regional education and present new developments on the training material based on needs of the future Earth observation geographic information workforce. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Atul. Thank you very much for your very nice introduction. Uh, I don't think I deserve it. Nevertheless, I'm just going to see. Uh, let's see if you can see. I'm not sure you're seeing, you're seeing the other one, right? Uh, you're seeing the full presentation. We don't see a presentation at the moment, Anna. Okay, I'm just going to. Uh, share Otherwise, I can upload it. No, no, that's that's know. fine. That's fine. Um, I was just trying to see the screen one. Okay, I think it's going to be the screen. 
and I'll just please let me know because I may. Are you seeing the screen now? Yes, now we see the okay. presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to give a brief presentation about how our, our history in uh, the Department of Oceanography and Fisheries at the University of the Azores. Um, it all began, uh, so I'm going to tell you a bit about the history and the infrastructures that we set up here in the region and also some of the research areas and some of our activities in terms of education and outreach and possible topics for collaboration and development. So, in terms of history, this department was founded about 45 years ago and it has associated several uh, uh, institutes and now more recently Okeanos Institute was previously a center. And also we are part of the Faculty of Science and Technology at the University of the Azores. Um, in terms, I'm just going to talk about EO infrastructures and platforms and systems. Actually, uh, the first satellite receiving station in the Azores for ocean applications was set up in 2000, 2000, 2001. Uh, we had it running for about 12 years and was the first station in Portugal to receive or view seaweeds data. Uh, we also at the time is, uh, processed or, or created a satellite processing system and a web platform that was available for about 16, uh, 16 years. And more recently, we developed uh, a Canopus satellite processing system that is able to incorporate now uh, new sensors. Just to give you a very old newspaper, it was very, quite interesting because in Portuguese, um, they actually translated detecção remota, which means remote sensing, to detecção de mota, which in English means the motorbike detection team. So it was some newspaper that became quite historical for us because they, that really means they didn't know what remote sensing was at all. It was not common. So this was our first installation, as you see, is a very small antenna, but still we could reach quite a large area in the Northeast Atlantic. Um, it's actually the, 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 cho the choice of such a small antenna had to do with very strong winds, also budget, obviously, but it was enough for what we wanted at the time. Um, we also were doing constantly besides the satellite receiving. So we used to receive raw data process and then send to NASA the level 1A so that NASA could distribute to other uh, users, EO users. And we also doing some uh, analysis in situ analysis called matchup analysis to see if our results were valid. So uh, we are receiving NASA satellites and also ESA satellites at the time Envisat that then went down, as you, you may know. And we process all these data constantly, daily. And uh, this was the platform that was available uh, for the public to see um, the imagery. More recently, we have a new platform. This is a very simple platform. It's still not public where we process every day different optical parameters and also uh, infrared uh, near infrared parameters and thermal and so forth and so we actually producing statistical data every day daily eight day 15 day monthly seasonal etc for different regions we have 19 years of satellite imagery timeline in this platform more than 30 years of special coverage and that depends a lot on the research, so it can go anywhere from Africa to Indonesia, but mostly concentrated in the Atlantic region. And we are now incorporating other sensors, and basically we are incorporating Sentinel-3 and Sentinel-2 on this um, platform. Um, so in terms of research areas, we have been always applying all our research constantly. We always apply in all projects, the satellite, um, the EO data, EO data, but um, the type of subject of, of um, research is quite um, diverse. Um, in terms of courses and training, we initiate, we have a PhD program in ocean science, a master program, and that where we initiated the remote sensing course that we call satellite oceanography in 2007 and still keeps going on. And there's also, we have a license degree, although we do not have uh, um, a specific um, discipline for uh, Earth observation, uh, we introduce these on other courses, oceanography, and there's a new course that is under development and where we also are going to introduce some of these Earth observation um, uh, skills. 
basically also we were able to through uh, different other courses including a summer school in england uh, for for two years two or three years i can't remember anymore where you also introduce uh, applications marine applications for um earth observation and it was quite interesting i couldn't remember anymore actually our first and oldest course of remote sensing was actually a licensed course in the marine biology department in the sorry in the biology department where uh, we still had in powerpoints and so this is a um, a very old uh, course um that we that's where we began this um these uh, educating uh, students in earth observation this just to give you an idea that was in a summer course in england how we combine aeronautical engineers aerospace engineers and with oceanography engineers and they got a first prize which is just a, a very simple work uh, but they got the first prize so it's important to to give them the perspective that you can have very different backgrounds and still work on earth observation particularly on on the topics that are common, for example, the eddies, the vortices, they exist also in space. So it's quite interesting to combine different students. So this, so I'm just going to report very quickly. We have a satellite oceanography course in the master's course. And this um, is a course that is taught on the second semester, just one semester course. And basically uh, they have some small introduction to remote sensing. Um, they also have uh, learned a little bit about the nature of electromagnetic radiation, then some basics of remote sensing, satellites and sensors, some skills about image processing, image interpretation. And then we have a second part of the course, applied to oceanography in the visible range, in the, in the thermal and microwave and radio wave ranges. And finally, some application where they have, uh, they learn how to process some data using different platforms that are available and how to get the data in terms of collaboration developing education um, we were very glad to be invited there was the first summer course remote sensing that was organized by portugal space and by university of algarve where we also collaborated in this course um, in terms of science we have several i said now more than probably 20 more than 20 for sure theses um, so masters and PhD students that are using um, remote sensing and also we are uh, more recently just two examples with private sector where we also doing some uh, for example um, there was a very strong harmful algae bloom in Algarve and we're looking at satellites to see that and also looking at some new species that were found in Madeira region. Finally, um, we have been during all these years, we have been always conscious about the, the need to do outreach. And so we have been doing a lot of talks, public talks, public authorities. Whenever we're invited, we go. And, and this was a very interesting talk that actually had the chance to give to schools in the garden and talk about earth observation and climate. So thank you very much. Uh, the question now remains which direction to, of course, we have still a lot of things to develop, but it's just a brief overview of what I've been doing the last 20 years. Thank you, Margarita. Thanks a lot, Anna. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, thank you, Walter. Okay, I will no problem. I will now introduce um, Pedro, de, uh, Pedro Freire da Silva. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to increase okay. this to stop. Wait. No problem. Uh, but the window is not acting now. I just want to. Okay, we can wait. Just one minute. Uh, no problem. Uh, stop sharing. Where is that? Uh, maybe okay. it's like you can help Anna and. Um, no, no, it's um, fine. It was just having a problem with my mouse. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Pedro, are you there already? Yes. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. So, okay. Uh, okay. So I will introduce uh, Pedro Freire da Silva. Is the chief technology officer at the Earth Observation Lab at Air Center, uh, which is the Atlantic. Um, is is a, a space engineer uh, by background. He, he has a lot of experience also in space system management operations, uh, commercial technology transfer, and intellectual property management. He will present us. Um, um, his view, his view, and and the views of the of a relevant uh, partner of private sector 
about fostering the Azorian business ecosystem employers challenge to find the right earth observation geographic information profile in the coastal maritime sector. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you very much, Arthur. Can, can uh, we, can I, sh or uh, can uh, Margarita share the presentation? Or do you want me to yeah, share? Yeah, sure. One, one moment. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank uh, Arthur, Margarita, and Nereus for this uh, uh, very nice workshop. Um, Please, it's now the. Okay. So today I uh, I will be um, uh, giving you an overview, uh, like uh, Artur already explained. I will give you an overview of what are the challenges uh, that we've been facing. Uh, the Air Center um, here in the Air Center in in the Azores in Pesaire. Um I'll, I'll give you a very brief uh, introduction of of the Air Center. So next slide, please. So uh, the vision of the Air Center, uh, the Air Center was created back in 2018. So we are a very recent uh, organization. Uh, it started back in 2013 with a high level dialogue uh, event. Um, and we have every year a high level dialogue event, which includes policymakers, uh, scientists, researchers, uh, companies. So it's a big event. The last one was in the US in Penn State. It was a virtual one because of the COVID. The vision of the Air Center is um, as an international distributed and collaborative network institution to foster job creation uh, in a knowledge driven economy in the Atlantic region uh, based on scientific excellence and to provide services to the scientific community and very important to contribute to the United Nations sustainable development goals uh, in the areas of climate change, digital transformation and inequalities in population dynamics. Next slide, please. So, um, next slide. Is this so, the one? Uh, yeah, that's right. So, okay. uh, the Air Center is um, uh, composed of many different uh, organizations and countries uh, uh, from, from, uh, from Norway, which has just joined as well, and uh, to the US, Brazil, South Africa. The network has been increasing. Uh, we just recently also have uh, um, been joined by, by Morocco, so they are now officially also part of the of the Air Center network. Next slide. Sometimes it delay, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you can move on uh, with your. Uh... Okay, so the Air Center. As a result of all the different high level dialogues uh, that we had since 2013 has resulted in the definition of several thematic missions. They go from clean and productive bays and estuaries, um, resilience to coastal and natural hazards, improved management of marine and coastal resources and environmental and maritime monitoring. So the air center mission is to provide um, uh, solutions and uh, in, in, in collaboration with all its partners um, in, in these different areas. Uh, again, Air Center as a non-profit organization, uh, our main uh, uh, means of collaboration is uh, through um, the network that we have, the, the extensive network that we have, um, and, and bring all the different players together in uh, and around these thematic missions. Next slide. Um, so, we are established, uh, as I said, with the headquarters here in, in Terceira. We are in a technological park. Um, we have been organizing uh, workshops and um, many different events. We are um, very active with the ecosystem that is available, uh, has been created in the Terinov, uh, which is a research uh, technological research park. Um, here in, in, in the Azores. So um, we have uh, more than 20 ongoing projects since uh, the last uh, year and a half, uh, worth more than 1.6 million euros. And we are very active uh, in uh, uh, bringing together all the different entities. These are just some of the examples of organizations here in the Azores. Again, we are an international um, organization, but we are making a, a, an important effort to connect these local entities and the companies and organizations to the global network. 
in the Atlantic. Next slide, please. So we are an Earth observation lab. Um, we are we are we are a, a NISA lab um, uh, in the so-called Space 4.0, and we are set up as a, a lab to make the institutional link between research, the Portuguese Space Agency, and the European Space Agency to explore innovative applications. Um, in Earth observation and in the Atlantic area. We are also a geo borne Secretariat and Geo Blue Planet uh, uh, thematic node, um, which means that we have uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, ongoing work in the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network, uh, as we are also pushing this, this network. We are thematic mission oriented, so we look for end user needs and real problems that need to be solved and together with the different partners, uh, come up with um, uh, and uh, with a, with the, with a strategy to um, apply for funding or uh, um, solving actual problems that are really needed to, to be solved. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, you can press the button as well for the next uh, uh, pop up. Another one. So as I said, um, we have uh, um, we are an ESA lab. Uh, we have many objectives as part of this lab that go from uh, testing new technologies, uh, connect the Azores region to a globally competitive European space sector, to attract and educate young and talented people, and uh, contribute, of course, uh, to European autonomy in using space, and inspire and uh, open a new interest in space to make it more visible to the new generation. We have uh, right now 11 staff uh, for PhD, we have an ongoing internship and PhD program for our young professionals. Um, we have been writing a lot of proposals since uh, October 2019. Um, and uh, we have been doing many workshops and we have been doing a, a lot of uh, interfaces and meetings with the different regional stakeholders from government to, um, uh, to university to, uh, to companies. Next slide, please. So this is the way that uh, uh, we organize our work. Uh, so we identify problems and challenges within the network. We have a, a problem portfolio. We have then the definition of requirements together with the end users. And we apply for demonstration projects or identify funding sources for demonstration projects, which then provide solutions. Um, um, and of course, uh, centered in the Earth observation. So we, we have to use from Copernicus, uh, in situ sensors, other constellations, and all this goes into um, uh, modeling, data processing, uh, storage that will generate products and services uh, for uh, the demonstration products themselves. Next slide. Um, my, major challenges that uh, that we have from the human resources point of view. So, being a recent organization. Um, here in in um, in the Azores and growing the team to to eleven now we will be twelve uh, next month. Um, it's really important to have um, uh, writing a good job post. Of course, this is very important if you want to attract uh, the right people um, and the right skills. Um, typ typically, the uh, work and the, the skills that we are working they go from biodiversity from space. Um, um, subsidence, land classification, quality of the air and, uh, and the water, machine learning, bathymetry, all, all these things are, are uh, Earth observation related skills that we are uh, actively working and uh, looking for. Um, of course, it's uh, programming skills and tools is uh, transversal, so many times uh, um, this is, this is a, a, a must for, for the persons that, 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 uh, that we hire. And um, of course, careful selection and interviewing process. Um, after the interview and once the, the work uh, starts, uh, we have specific training on specific Earth observation topics. There is a lot of material uh, online and, um, and of course through our partners um, uh, and depending a lot on, on the projects. Uh, that, that we have ongoing. Next slide. Uh, these are some of the challenges which are barriers to entry in the Earth observation. So Earth observation has a lot of um, um, a lot of applications in in many different domains, um, and they are called the 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 the, the 
the different aids, so the, the availability, accessibility, awareness, acceptance, and, 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 and adoption. So all these uh, barriers to, to entry are um, usually um, uh, what, what needs to be uh, overcome if, if earth observation products need to, to, to reach the market. Um, uh, of course, uh, um, adoption is one of the critical ones uh, because you need to have capabilities um, to, to provide uh, and to deliver uh, this type of, of uh, earth observation data uh, in, in, and making them operational to support the actual uh, users and, and, and uptake. So, yes, ne next slide. This is uh, just a list of uh, the, the projects that uh, we have going uh, uh, in the Earth Center. They go from um, uh, aquaculture related uh, uh, activities, um, uh, Laplace for the detection of, uh, of uh, plastics from nano to microplastics. Um, um, we also have the ports of the future in which we are tackling the, the air quality and, uh, and the water quality in ports. Um, so we are also very involved in the um, FPA CAP, so the Copernicus Market uh, Uptake um, Program uh, with the Commission. And um, oh, these are some of the examples. Uh, next slide. Uh, just to give you an example, um, this is a, a European Space Agency project in which we have a lot of local partners from, from the Azores working, just like uh, Amberjack and, and parts of the Azores. Um, and in this particular picture, you can see what happened um, uh, in the air quality in a typical um, time of the year where uh, uh, you have a lot of... Uh, vessels going in and in and out of the port of uh, of São Miguel. You can see in the top image uh, the level of pollution uh, um, of nitrogen dioxide that uh, occurred. Um, in this particular day, we had uh, uh, a lot of vessels and, and big big vessels going in and out of, of the port. And comparing that information with uh, uh, from 2000, uh, 2019 with 2020, you can really see a significant drop in the air quality. So. This is just an example of uh, what uh, Sentinel-5 uh, from Copernicus can do, uh, allowing you to observe the, water, the, the air quality. We are doing that also for, for the water quality and combining that with uh, in situ sensors and uh, big data, uh, provide information that would allow the port authorities to, to act and to take uh, uh, decisions, informed decisions on how to manage uh, its uh, activities. So, this is what I wanted to uh, show to you, and just uh, a last uh, slide. Ah, okay. sorry. It's okay. Uh, it's fine. Uh, okay, I will share them, Pedro, anyway, uh, in no, the, no, the follow-up of the... Thank you very much. And maybe because the time is very, very short, and we really want to go to the discussion with the audience and the... Um, between the audience and the speakers. Maybe, um, Arthur, you can introduce the, yes. uh, the next speaker. Yeah. Yeah, I will, I will introduce to the, the last speaker of this panel, Fabio Vieira, who is a public officer at the Regional uh, Directorate of Science and Technology. Uh, Fabio uh, has a degree in European stu uh, Studies and a Master's degree in International Relations from the University of the Azores. And he will, he will present uh, a case-based scenario as the technical officer of the Marine uh, EO uh, H2020 project. Uh, please, Fabio, you can start. Thank you, Artur. Um, Margita, maybe you can share my presentation, please. And while you do it, I would like to thank you to uh, uh, Nereuj and, uh, and its partners for the invitation to uh, to be here today and speak a little bit about uh, uh, Marineo and some insights about uh, Earth observation and GI skills. Uh, th thank you, Fabio. Uh, is it possible that you share it, or you have a technical problem? So no, I can faster. share. I okay, can share. perfect. Because the idea is that you share them, um, so we can move. Otherwise, it delays the procedure. Thank you. I think you can see it, right? Yes, yes. You can put it perfect. also at, in a full screen. Uh, if I put in full screen, because I have two screens, probably we will have a technical problem. So if you don't, mind... no problem, no problem. Please, okay. please. 
So uh, my presentation to the, today will refer about uh, just a very small overview about Marineo, what was this uh, PCP, and then uh, some insights that we have discovered while uh, uh, managing this, this project about uh, Earth observation skills needs here in the Azores. And uh, lastly, the, the synergies between Marineo and the EO4JL uh, project. So, in a very short glance, the uh, Marineo was a very technical, uh, uh, legal, and financial complex project that involved uh, um, many partners around uh, Europe, okay. and this was a pre-commercial procurement. So, uh, it, it means that we have several stages uh, where the best solutions keep going forward to uh, develop, test, and validate um, solutions in uh, two uh, different uh, uh, areas, marine monitoring and uh, maritime uh, surveillance. This was the first uh, pre-commercial procurement uh, uh, in Europe, and it has a, a total budget allocated just for this part of 3.4 million euros. And in the end, we, we had the opportunity to test two prototypes in marine monitoring for each one of the, um, of the use case scenarios and another two uh, solutions for the two services in maritime surveillance. And it was a, a very interesting uh, findings that we have done uh, throughout this process. If anyone wants to have more information about uh, Marineo, uh, you can ask me information or uh, you can go to our website where we have the, all the information of a project that just ended uh, um, uh, January 30 uh, of this year. What it is uh, related with um, this workshop today and the O4J project, we have concentrated more our presentation on what we have found that are the current needs in capacity building here in the Azores. And this uh, this is not based uh, on any kind of survey that we have done. The the scope of Marine PCP was not this one, but is based on the findings that we have done. Uh, throughout the project by talking with the um, with the stakeholders uh, uh, here in, in, in the Azores. So it is a fact, uh, um, I would like to remember just, just a small parenthesis, like Francisco Wallenstein uh, told you on his first presentation of the path that we had in the Earth observation here in the Azores and specifically in the public sector. Uh, it is a fact that the Azores government and the Azores government Officials and technicians and and decision makers still have uh, still have very low earth observation capabilities and skills. And uh, earth observation it's it should not be uh, uh, seen as a novelty issue here in the Azores. We have a, a, an EEZ for uh, that comprehends around one million square kilometers. We have several marine protected areas that are expected to increase in the next years. So earth observation, it's not a novelty. It should be uh, uh, seen as a, a critical tool for uh, decision making. Uh, it is something uh, especially related with the sea. Uh, it is very important to the Azores to rapidly uh, gain more skills and more capabilities in earth observation and to adopt more technologies that are based uh, on uh, on um, earth observation products. So the the things that we have today often are subcontracted and not seen as a political priority and subcontracted mainly to the University of the Azores, for example, for the team of Professor Anna Martins and other teams, and also for some, some uh, uh, SMEs that operate here in the at the regional market. In marine monitoring, at least until, until October last year, because this, this was the time when the, the government changed, the, the approach for marine monitoring was always to subcontract these services uh, to, the, to the University of the Azores. So there was not a, a real interest on uh, giving training to operators and, uh, and by themselves they use these solutions retrieve data and do their analysis. They would prefer always to subcontract these services to third parties and then just to receive the, the periodic uh, reports annually or, or biannually. Um, 
there was no real demand on operating directly these systems. Uh, there was also um, uh, an approach, uh, this approach was related with the lack of specialized uh, uh, human resource. So, in fact, there was not uh, a political priority to, to use directly these systems and these solutions, but also even if we had this priority, we didn't have the skills and the human resources capacitated to do this. So, in uh, we normally the um, the uh, public authorities gave this to the entity, normally the University of the Azores, that had the resources, the skills, and the know-how to operate these kinds of system and to interpret the information. Because this is another very important part: uh, the skills are needed not only to operate the systems but to interpret the information that has been given by the systems. Um, so we made usage and very good usage of the know-how in the University of uh, the Azores. In maritime surveillance, the case is a little bit different because there was more advanced skills on this sector uh, by using uh, applications that use earth observation uh, products and in fact, there is a um, there is more demand to use directly these solutions and these prototypes, and this was mainly due to the fact that uh, the the entities or the public authorities that use these kinds of services they are normally related with the inspective services of the Azores government, and they need near real time products uh, uh, of earth observation. So there is no need, or uh, even uh, it's uh, it should be avoided, and uh, any middleman. Uh, there is the the preference to use directly the systems and to exploit them directly by the end users. So the link between the services and the end users need to be shorter to be more effective. Uh, if I want a product about a dark ship a vessel in any uh, marine protected area in the Azores. It doesn't serve me uh, at all uh, as a, a regional inspector to receive a report one or two weeks after or, or six months after. I would need to operate the system in real time or at least uh, near real time. However, the archipelago is still very dependent on national and European solutions. This is this is due to the fact that we don't have the capabilities or the structure or the knowledge to have our own solutions. But it's also due to the fact that the institutional architecture that we have here in Europe uh, also um, make that regional authorities are more dependent on third parties to operate these kind of solutions specifically in the surveillance uh, area. So the AMSA role, despite AMSA uh, is a, a critical player and uh, its, its mission, it's critical for Europe. No one questions that, uh, and what they do, it, it's it's of course very important. But the role that they have um, actually um, decelerates the usage of proprietary solutions in this area. In the case of uh, the Azores, uh, it's also a fact that operators often have a GIS background, but they are not experts in earth observation. So this means that. They are very proficient to use the solutions because they have a GIS background, but sometimes they, they are not capable of interpret the results because they don't have earth observation specific uh, skills. And just to finalize, because I only have one more minute, uh, some synergies between EO for Geo and Marine EO. We think that uh, uh, it is important to provide earth observation public to public services, like I told you before, it is some it is a demand and not should be faced as a novelty. The empowerment of a new generation of users in academia, public sector, and private companies that need to work together and build capacity together. Uh, the need of uh, improved soft skills in uh, or introduce uh, soft skills in earth observation. The solutions like the one we produced uh, demand basic earth observation uh, skills that projects like EO4JL can provide for the end users and the operators. The adoption of services, technologies, and service 
based on Earth, op uh, Earth observation products in the Azores benefit from synergies between projects and initiatives. So everyone, uh, every single part of this ecosystem uh, should work together to uh, to uh, to have a more strong Earth observation uh, um, ecosystem here in the Azores. And uh, we definitely uh, understand or think that these types of projects like Marineo, EO4Geo, the ones that Predo Silva uh, presented uh, in uh, an air center, each one of them have the potential to uh, to unlock the, the potential of Earth observation products in the Azores. And Roya, uh, sorry for these 30 plus seconds and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio, very much for this great presentation, which also allows us to see the state of the Earth observation to information skills in the Azores very clearly. Uh, so to close the first panel, we just to uh, to remind you that we heard the the views from uh, from the local and regional authorities, um, from the academia, uh, from uh, from the private sector and other key maritime stakeholders. Uh, regarding what are the needs uh, for the earth observation to information sector uh, in terms of skills um, in the Azores. So thank you all for sharing uh, your insightful views uh, and for offering this very useful overview. And now we move on for the next uh, seven minutes, I would say, uh, uh, with the Q&A session. Uh, we I, we already noticed that you have provided us already with some questions, but please, uh, if you want to um, to to share your questions, do it now in the chat, uh, and we can uh, share them with the with the speakers. Uh, meanwhile, um, I would like to take the advantage of my position to raise some uh, a question to the speakers. Um, and maybe after that, we can also, I can, I could also share your questions with the speakers. So, um, to, um, to Anna, to, to Pedro, to the two Pedros, to Fabio, um, uh, to Anthony and to Adam, uh, and if uh, also to Francisco. Um, it's clear that there is a need and a clear interest for uh, further development of uh, skills in uh, Earth observation maritime activities. Uh, in this respect, to what extent and in which ways um, the different sectors that you represent from academia, from the, the private and public sector could complement each other, could cooperate with each other to maximize the impact of the right uh, earth observation and geoinformation skills. Um, so uh, you could, uh, whoever would like to start first, uh, please feel free. To, to take the the floor. Maybe Mar hello, Margarita. Anna? Yeah. Anna? Um, yes. I think I think we have made some development in the sense that I remember about twenty years back doing um, a subtle, uh, doing a, a workshop or conference or more than twenty years back actually that the main idea was to introduce earth observation techniques in the university and how to prepare them for the working force, let's say. And I remember at the time that the academia was quite against. They said, no, we just have to, to you know, to teach uh, uh, theoretical. I don't have to prepare them to a private sector because private sector is different. So there was, it was, I felt at the time it was almost a failure when we talked about it. And because people, I think the academia was still not very much in towards preparing people for the private sector. And, uh, uh, you know, so I've seen that actually there has been some development. Now people don't say that they know that it's important to make this relation, but also in terms of research. And let's say, for example, you have now in the private sector, you have services, for example, for fishermen that provide information for fishermen. And the best services are those that actually made a link with the university or with a, some, you know, group in, within the university. So they actually, rather than giving, sometimes those services in the past were quite 
when I, I, I remember seeing some services from somebody in Spain that were actually, um, the costs were very expensive and the products were not that good. And today also there's a lot, uh, there, there has been actually an increase in collaboration between university and the research and getting, obtaining better products for public, for example. And you see that those links actually uh, work really well. So it's not surprising, uh, again, you know, uh, about 20 or 25 years ago, would be very difficult to have research people collaborating directly with private sector. And this is something that now it's actually common and, and is not regarded as something, it's actually regarded as advantage. So I don't think that's a problem now. I think the problem is that sometimes um, as you said, is whatever you do, then is not used. Then when we think about the public sector, for example, as Fabio referred, for people that m could use these earth observation skills, but they are scared, they don't really understand, they don't have the training. And so I think there has to be an increased effort towards, because everybody uses GN GNSS, they don't know what it is sometimes, but they use communications every day in a telephone, you know, with their portable phones and whatever. So nobody uh, thinks, oh, uh, I don't know what a, what a, um, you know, a mobile phone is. I want to use it. Everybody uses. But behind that, there's a communication satellites. So there's a strong earth, uh, not earth observation, in this case, GNSS, communications in the back. But earth observation is still more difficult to understand why it's so important. So I'm not answering you completely, but I'm saying there has been a development. I can see that development, and I think this is very nice. It's still a slow process, but it's happening. And I leave to other people to comment. Thank you very much, Anna, for this valuable uh, input. Um, and uh, I see your point uh, here. Maybe we can also uh, listen to Pedro. I think he, he also wants to say th something, if I understand. Yes. Um, well, I, I want to, to. So, Pedro, you represent in this panel. Just to know, to to explain to the audience, you are from the private sector. Um, you share. You represent the private sector. Uh, so it's uh, something that um, uh, it will really enrich the discussions. Uh, so we heard from Anna from the academia. What are his op her opinion on that and. Uh, uh, now uh, we are very interesting to listen from uh, from your point of view. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I want to bring you the example of Amazon. Amazon in the past uh, uh, few years has developed uh, an incredible capacity capability to deploy um, Earth observation products in the market, um, and they've done that really fast. So you can even download data from satellites in their own stations. Uh, you can develop software prototypes and put them running online in the cloud. And, um, and this again, and I, I, I say this twice or more than twice, they have done this at an incredible speed. Uh, they are using Copernicus today already in their products. And the good thing about this is that they are using um, uh, in the cloud a solution and they, they they deploy the system in, in a way that it's operational and that solves uh, problems in, a, in an ecosystem of, of, uh, of uh, products and, and, and services. Um, there are, of course, uh, European uh, companies which are, which are also attempting to do that. Uh, but what I want to bring here to, 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 to the discussion is that, indeed, um, uh, the people that are working at Amazon developing all these, they come, of course, and they have a lot of training from, from universities and from, from science. They are scientists, many of them. But they are actively looking at problems and solutions, and they are talking with companies on the field in a, in a dialogue. Um, and, and it's not many times what happens also in Europe, in which you have the Horizon program uh, or the Horizon 2020, in which you have to apply for uh, specific lines of funding. Um, what happens is that you are actually solving a problem and that the problem has uh, a, a mechanism and means to widely be disseminated and, and adopted and deploy, uh, adopted and, and employed with the actual uh, end user and, and problem. So I would say that um, science has the means to provide 
um, tools and um, uh, education that can support the economy and the development of the economy and to create jobs is the result of a dialogue process between uh, uh, scientists, researchers, universities, and uh, industries and companies. Um, and I think Anna already showed and already gave some examples of this harmful mm -hmm. algal bloom. Uh, and I would say this is the most important thing to look at problems, identify those problems, because that's how companies will grow uh, with the business and will apply science to, to come up with solutions. Thank you very much, Pedro, for your insightful comments. Um, maybe because we are limited in time and I, um, it's better to close in a few minutes for a short coffee break, so then we can uh, invite the EO4GO partners to, to present the EO4GO tools. Uh, I will uh, maybe focus on the um, uh, questions we have on the chat from the audience. And I would like to ask from the speakers really to have to give a very, very short answer to each one of them. Otherwise, if we don't have the time, we will uh, answer you by an email. So Desiree asks uh, the following. She is an ex student uh, in the University of the uh, of the Azores. She's working for USPA and she's uh, she's asking what is the plan for GNSS and EO focused startups interested in exploring the potential of the Azores Island from uh, from a technology business standpoint. What programs and partnership are in place to help entrepreneurs go from great tech to great user centered products? Maybe something very shortly on, on that and we can uh, focus later to the to the other things if 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 someone would like to reply to her you're very welcome i think this would be more related with uh, um pedro probably uh because this is more in plans uh future pedro plans or fabio maybe yes oh fabio fabio yes also sorry okay Okay, F uh, Fabio, if you are available, you can you could um, say if you works on that. Otherwise, uh, via email, maybe you could. Yes. Fabio is already. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, I think probably we can answer by email because uh, this has several ramifications, and uh, we have the initiative like as a big here in the Azores that should be the the right place to to make this this connection. So I, I will leave mm -hmm. my uh, my email at the, the Perfect. box and then she can uh, reply direct to me and I can at least okay. redirect this to the right person. Okay, so Desiree, um, you can uh, contact with Fabio bilaterally. Moving on, this is another question again from, from, from her. Uh, I guess it's also in the same lines. Uh, mentor during the recent Cassini Hackathon, I saw interesting startups and engineers from artificial intelligence around EU, including Portugal, mainland. None from the Azores, however. How we can uh, help? May I? Yes, Francisco. Sorry, ah, who is? Doubling. Yes, Francisco, please. Please. Well, um, indeed, as Fabio mentioned, this is, we have, there are several problems, all of them uh, you know, Parting from from the Copernicus site and from PT Space and from uh, from um, the EPN, which is the Ezabic Portugal uh, manager, um, regarding Earth observation and entrepreneurship, I don't think there are re regional programs for this. Um, maybe we could provide and and provide links for Desiree for, uh, to to the to the site of uh, of the the, re the relevant department of the government for for support for entrepreneurship but specifically entrepreneurship regarding the the earth observation sector there are a lot of initiatives uh, in the copernicus uh, site so i would suggest um Desiree to contact to to check this information online and if she still has problems, she can, she can contact me as well to to help in 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 setting up contacts with with the relevant stakeholders regarding this issue. Thank you, Francisco. Maybe you can also include your email in the chat uh, for her. 
Then another question again in the same um, uh, line from Ricardo. Are there any ongoing future programs uh, combining Earth observation and the development of renewable energy use in the Azores, namely peak tidal and wave? Um, probably I can answer to Ricardo a little bit because uh, we actually interested to um, Ricardo contact us previously and we are very interested to collaborate. Um, Hello, Ricardo. In, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, Anna. Sorry. <laughs> and we are interested even uh, for this collaboration. There was in the past some projects related with MIT and also I think Austin, Texas. There was um, some researchers oh. was Green Islands, I think, and but that was mostly related with uh, renewable energy sources, including um, at the time using the energy of the tides. But that was not related uh, with Earth observation at the time. So, as far as I know, maybe somebody could help me or, or probably somebody who knows better. They are not really um, ongoing earth observation and the development of renewable energy sources at the moment. But again, I may be wrong, definitely not at the university, but we most certainly would be very interested to collaborate uh, in the future. And I've spoken with Ricardo before about these and the university will be very, uh, will be very nice to, to make this sort of collaboration. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you uh, for your reply. Um, maybe Pedro da Silva, there is a, the que a question from for you from Isabel in the chat. Maybe you can reply to her bilaterally. Uh, then one last question, and then we close from Kent. Uh, are there collaborations from non-European researchers? He is from a small country of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, and he's interested in updating soil erosion RS research in the Eastern Caribbean. This is a very, very generic question. Uh, if we don't, if you don't have the answer, maybe. Um... Um, okay, again, um, I'm not going to answer Kent in the sense that this is not our area of research. But one of the questions he asked is, are there for non-European researches? Most certainly we have been doing a lot of collaboration with people outside of Europe, including Africa, and uh, Indonesia, et cetera, using EOTH observation, but for ocean applications. So not for soil erosion, but definitely with non-European, yes. Uh, maybe I can add something about that. Uh, uh, I guess that uh, Air Center uh, uh, could be a good, a, good, um, a good focus of the network to, uh, to establish with islands uh, uh, like Grandins. Uh, for this kind of of, uh, of studies and of approaches, uh, uh, maybe uh, at the Caribbean uh, uh, there are some connection with their center, Pedro. Um, indeed, um, we, we are uh, part of your center, doing um, uh, a lot of uh, events uh, across the Atlantic, um, and um, there is certainly space for for collaboration. I, I mean, we have um, um, network, net, networking Fridays every Friday. We have uh, in the YouTube. You can see all the projects and, and, and activities and uh, and uh, people from the network which uh, present uh, what they have been doing. And it's it's very easy to to contact us. Uh, you, you can contact myself or my colleagues, and I uh, will put them. I will put you in contact with them if you have some specific lines uh, or uh, topics of interest that we can uh, we can look at it and we can try to certainly find other people which are working on the topic and uh, and facilitate that uh, uh, the, even the start of a new of a new activity yes okay thank you very much pedro maybe because we run out of time um we can close this session um it's time for a coffee break. So this maybe we can have in um, instead of uh, 15 minutes, five minutes. So we connect again at 105, please. Um, and then we give the we invite the EO4GO partners to show us how what the, are these EO4GO tools and how they can help us. Meanwhile, I share with you the link to the quality assessment form. What do you think about our workshop? Is it organized well? So please fill it in uh, be, before we join again. And uh, we connect, stay online, just remove uh, the cameras and unmute yourselves, and we connect at 105.
five past one. Okay, thank okay, you very okay, much. Marg okay, Margarita, uh, uh, just let me ask to Pedro da Silva to answer uh, privately to Isabel Pessoa Lopes, uh, as it is a, a, a question related yes. to our center, okay? Thank you. Okay, okay. See you all in five minutes. So hello again, hi to everyone. 
I hope you managed to prepare your coffee to take your cup of coffee and continue the workshop. Um, okay, so uh, we can start the second part of the workshop and I have the pleasure to introduce to you Rob Lemons from the University of Twente, Aida Monfort Muriach uh, from the University from, uh, from, uh, from Spain, Florian Albrecht Albrecht from the University of Salzburg. And these are some of the partners that are, and Ahande Erdem from Vito, the space company. And these are uh, um, some of the partners behind the development of this EO4GEO solutions. Uh, maybe you can uh, open your cameras and um, let them open through the whole uh, second section. And um, in the next minutes, just to mention, in the next 20 minutes, uh, the, they will showcase the EO4GO tools and training material and how uh, you can benefit, how your organization can, benefit, can benefit from the use of these tools. I would like also to ask from them uh, not to uh, forget to mention in the beginning of uh, the presentation to whom each of the tools is addressed. Uh, and I think we can uh, we can start. Uh, so I won't take any any more time. Uh, we can start if I am um, if I'm correct with Florian, right? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. I just share my screen and start the presentation of my talk. Present. Yeah, you can see it, do you? Yes, and okay. just to add something, Florian, before you start, this is a, also a very interesting section session for students. So please uh, uh, keep your notes and um, uh, after the presentation, you can uh, join the interaction with the with the uh, for geo uh, partners. Thank you. Yeah, so um, my name is Florian Albrecht from the University of Salzburg in Austria. And um, at our department for geoinformatics, um, we always had a quite applied focus. So um, it was really nice to see that we now um, in this EO4GEO project were involved in creating the body of knowledge and um, in creating the applied perspective on that. So. Um, I want to present to you um, the body of knowledge and its content for marine applications now. And first I will present what is the BOC and what how um, how we have uh, developed the EO4GEO BOC. Um, I use the monitor the marine ecosystems concept as presenting what's the typical content we have in the body of knowledge about each concept. And I will focus on the role of skills because they are quite central to the EO4GEO tools that will afterwards be presented. And um, to show the diversity of concepts and the diversity of skills, I also will um, present an EO workflow related to marine. So the body of knowledge as Margarita presented at the beginning is um, kind of our um, it's a formal description of a professional domain and um, so any kind of concepts that we teach or that we have to understand to apply EO and GI um, are included in there. So theories, methods and technologies and and um, other things. And so it's our common vocabulary, this body of knowledge. And um, what we did in the EOFG project was to build on previous initiatives that focused on geographic information and added um, the concepts for EO and also added um, a market oriented perspective in there. So um, the market oriented perspective means that we actually de describe different user groups as concepts. We describe EO services as concepts and typical EO products so that we have the th thematic diversity of products and um, thematic diversity of users in there um, that we want to produce information for. So um, this is the background um, of the um, EO 
for Geo Initiative. Currently, we have an, about 900 concepts in the body of knowledge, um, about 400 coming from geographic information, a bit more from Earth observation, and 70 are included in um, that in the Earth observation concepts that particularly focus on the uses and the services. Um, you see this um, link down there, bok.eo for geo. Dot EU. That is the link to the um, BOC visualization and search tool that everybody um, within the domain and also students and, and, and so can have a look at and see the concept descriptions. And um, so monitor the marine ecosystem is one of those concept descriptions. Um, we have um, each concept has its own unique ID that's added to the URL and um, can also also be referenced and um, will stay the same, will always refer to the same concept as long as we have this body of knowledge. And uh, we have a description that explains what the concept is about, 200 to 50 to 500 words. Um, we list references and um, from the literature and um, point out websites for further reading and we have the skills included. Skills are things that you can know, that you can learn or that you can apply. And one of them I mentioned in here, the estimate chlorophyll A concentration for monitoring harmful algal blooms. Um, as uh, Pedro um, Neves already presented at the beginning, he had a nice map about that. Um, and so this skill estimate near surface chlorophyll A concentration for monitoring harmful algal bloom is one of the skills attached to monitor the um, marine ecosystem. And uh, such a skill can appear as a learning outcome for a training action. For example, satellite oceanography is a course at the university and uh, it can appear, this skill can also appear as a requirement in a job offer, or it can appear as a task in a business process for for example, for a service element that um, allows early warnings for aquaculture about harmful algal blooms. And um, so this is the um, list of skills that we described in our body of knowledge related to that specific um, workflow of EO-based chlorophyll A mapping. The first one is actually for searching proper satellite images that can provide um, ocean color products. The second skill is about applying atmospheric correction to extract ocean color from earth observation imagery. Um, the third one is to apply radi radiative transfer modeling and to get inherent optical properties out of that data. And um, so the fourth is then using that information to estimate near surface chlorophyll A. And um, so the final task or skill in there is to design a map of chlorophyll A concentration according to the requirements of HAB management for aquaculture. And that final skill is, for example, attached to the users in fishing um, concept that we have in the body of knowledge. And um, so, there's a diverse set of concepts in there and each of them has, has attached those skills. So um, we are able to um, map different workflows for different users. And uh, so that's um, nice to have these skills in there. And um, so as it, this body of knowledge is the basis for our project, we have the tools, um, the EO4GO tools that can reference those concepts and the skills in their um, um, for their tasks. For example, the curriculum design tool references them as learning outcomes and the job offer tool references them as, um, as uh, skill requirements, same as the occupational profile tool. But for more explanations about the um, tools, I hand on to um, Rob now that he can present. Uh, thank you, Florian. 
I just keep going in my slides and yeah. just tell. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My name is Rob Lemons from University of Twente. And um, I will just briefly show you um, the editing tool of, of the body of knowledge, also known as BOC. Um, and there are actually different ways to visualize uh, the box. So we have um, the, the one that uh, uh, Florian Margreta also showed. So here you see a screenshot on the left with this big cloud of uh, 900 plus concepts. And I will briefly go with you through um, how you can engage with this uh, these concepts. Next slide, please, Florian. So uh, this is a tool that we use for editing uh, the BOC. Um, and so this is called the Living Textbook. And this is a tool that we also use for our own education at our university. And this is what you see here. Um, so we have basically um, a core book with uh, the concepts of um, GI science and Earth observation. And this tool uh, works a bit like uh, Wikipedia. So on the left hand side, you see a text description with pictures and you can also uh, apply formula there. And on the right hand side, you see the concept map, which is then used to make it possible to see context uh, of different concepts. So here you see the map concepts in the, in the middle and it is described uh, on the left hand side in text. And at the bottom, you also see a learning path in with which you, students can go from one concept to the other, just like uh, you would read a normal book. So this tool is actually useful for uh, university um, staff. And so that's why we are showing it to you also here uh, to create courses and also uh, from both sides, uh, from uh, students and, and from staff perspective. Uh, so the tool is also useful for researchers and for their partners uh, to create a common understanding of, of concepts. So to agree also on uh, the way that uh, concepts are interpreted. And also for business partners and actually for anyone to create awareness of uh, what are uh, inside concepts and what are the context of these concepts. As you see in this concept map, the relationships uh, between different concepts. For instance, here you see uh, that traveling is related to map, so and that GI is also related to map. So you can create a uh, context of each concept. Uh, next slide, please, Florian. So uh, for this purpose, we also use it for uh, creating the body of knowledge in the EO for Geo project. Uh, as already said, uh, 900 concepts uh, which we have. And uh, of course, because of the context of this workshop, uh, we highlight a few of those uh, related to uh, the marine con uh, context and, and to water and ocean. Uh, so here you see the monitor marine concept that was already also highlighted by uh, Florian and see the connections with other concepts. For instance, uh, the monitor marine is connected, is subconcept of services and applications in EO. So what you basically see in this uh, body of knowledge that we create a hier hierarchical structure, so uh, sub-concept of other concepts. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, within this uh, living textbook tool, uh, by creating it, what, which we do with uh, a lot of experts in uh, specific working groups, and that's also a kind of invitation to you now, if you are interested to uh, help us with uh, creating this content further, uh, you are welcome also to, to uh, contact us and so you can uh, become an expert on specific uh, concepts. Uh, so here you see the search uh, page uh, of the, the body of knowledge where you can search for particular uh, concepts, for instance, uh, typing the, the uh, search term of water uh, in, in two different ways. Um, if you stay uh, until the end of the workshop, we will show you in a hands-on uh, how to do this. And you can also try it yourself. So we have prepared uh, an environment for you that you can also um, really see what is in this uh, body of knowledge. Next slide, please. And uh, so what you can then also do as an expert, when you uh, get access to this body of knowledge, you can edit specific concepts uh, by opening uh, each of these small circles, as you see here, and then edit the text uh, that is in there. Next slide, please. Yeah, so that is uh, handing over to Aida. Okay, so, so Florian, you keep presenting, right? Yes, I so, keep presenting. Um, 
I'm Aida Monfort Murias from Universitat Jaume I and I'm going to present you some of the body of knowledge and user tools we developed in the context of EFRG project. So every time there is a new release of the body of knowledge in the living textbook, we do an internal process to export the body of knowledge to the EOFRG platform. And this EOFRG platform, sorry, not yet, <laughs> makes it publicly available through the API REST to use the, the to use it in the EOFRG tools or any external tool that can query the, the different versions we have. You can check all the releases of the book in the book.eo4geo.eu website as Florian explained before. And EO4geo tools are a set of tools uh, which are based on book concepts and skills to better describe content in the scope of the geographic information and ethos based sector. So, next slide, please. The, the first tool I will present is the job offer tool which allows users to define job offers in terms of concepts and the skills coming from the book. Human resource offices are the main target group, but it can also work to define training offers from academia. And when having the sector job offers in the job offer tool, we can explore the most demanded book knowledge and skills. The tools are online for viewing and there is no need to log in to view, so you can browse to the web and explore job offers. Next slide, please. As an example, these are the knowledge and skills required by a, by a job offer. So, knowledge are the ones in color and are uh, associated to different knowledge areas. And the skills, the ones in gray, are associated with those book concepts. Next slide, please. If you navigate to, the, to this address, b.ly uh, slash job offers, you will see uh, this job offer in the tool. And apart from the knowledge and skill, it also contains a description of the job offer, the application domains uh, from the international standard classification from UNESCO, which it falls into, and the level of EQF, which is the European Qualification Framework. Next slide, please. Also, you can define in the job offer transversal skills or soft skills from the ESCO classification. And you can specify data sets and tools needed to perform the, the job, languages needed, and some other information related to the job offer. Next slide. Next tool I will present is the curriculum design tool, which allows us to define educational offers based on both concepts and skills. And academy and training providers in the sector are the target. With this tool, we can explore the most offered knowledge and skills. Next slide. As with the job offer, you can access the, the web address and you can view without the need of login this example curriculum uh, that I created based on the satellite oceanography course presented by Professor Anna Martins before. So the educational offers are defined in a tree structure and for each node of the tree, you can reuse book content in several items. You can easily see which nodes have book content because they are matching the color of the knowledge areas. So this course is from a master and it is structured in two sections and each section has several lectures. So for example, the description of a node can also come from a description of a concept. The prerequisites are book concepts that you need to know before taking the course and the learning outcomes as explained by Florian are also the, the book skills. Next slide. This is how you browse through the book content and uh, select which content to, to reuse in the educational offer. So you can search for matching tests and you can, uh, you can browse graphically clicking on the diagram and you can browse textually clicking on the links that will bring you to, to other concepts. Next slide, please. So when you finish the finding the educational offer, it is safe and other people can check it. Uh, the, the 3D diagram is interactive, so you can click in the different nodes and see which information uh, has associated. And next slide. So the last tool I will present is the book matching tool. And with this tool, the content uh, based on the book we defined in the other tools or as we call it, the book annotated resources can be, can be compared. 
Uh, everyone can use this this tool without the need of login and see similarities between between these book annotated resources. So, for example, we can use it to find the best candidates for a job offer or rank educational profiles according to a living occupational profile. Next slide. So this, this is the, the main view of the book matching tool and you can select in the menu which resources you want to compare. So in this case, I selected the, the educational offer that I created before and I want to compare with job offers and uh, you can order them by matching a score and we see that, for example, with the job offer we created before, it has an 80% of matching. Next slide. And this matching comes because of the concepts that are similar. So uh, if we scroll down, uh, when selecting the two resources, we scroll down and we see which concepts are similar in the two resources. And next slide, please. And also we see which ones are not matched. So for example, in this case, we see that all of them are matched except for one concept that, that is there. Um, so if, if there are more items to compare, this tool also compares them, like the skills, the EQF level. And later in the hands-on session, we will see more use cases of this tool. Next slide. Okay, thanks for your attention. And uh, this is the project webpage where you can find more information on the tools. And if you have any questions later in the hands-on session, we will have more time to, to play with them. So. I hand over to Margarita. Thank you very much, Aida, for this. I think Florian uh, would like to say something on the on that, or um, would you like to invite uh, Ande for uh, for the next session? Um, uh, yes, these are uh, these are just to help the audience. This was the mm. presentation of the EU for Geo Tools, and maybe now, uh, Florian, you can. Um, Say that uh, I mean we we go to the EO uh, to the EO tools uh, uh, by by Vito, um, and we, we uh, maybe Ande you can uh, um, share your presentation with us and uh, say what is the difference and um, uh, show to the audience uh, how 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 they can use the the platform. Thank you. Yeah, can you the, hear I me think. now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right, great. So I had to unmute twice somehow. Um, thank you, Margarita, and thank you all. Um, my name is Heinde Erdem. I work for uh, Flemish Institute for Technological Research, also known as VITO, and I will be presenting you with the eo 4 geo EO tools. And the main audience is, is uh, students, teachers, the researchers, or whoever wants to get their hands uh, on the, the Earth observation data. Um, so as Vito, um, sorry, okay. As Vito Remote Sensing, our mission is to lower the barriers for uh, working with Earth observation data. Hence, uh, we are supporting the EO4GEO vision by providing or offering our Terrascope Earth observation platform and also OpenEO, which uh, allows you to hide software processing complexity. So basically, we are allowing users to focus on their domain and not spend too much time on IT challenges. Um, so let's start with Terrascope. What is it? It's the Belgian collaborative ground segment for uh, Sentinel missions. We provide easy access to the satellite data, but we are much more than just uh, a distribution hub for satellite data. We also offer products derived from satellite data. We do have a, a very large team of scientists working here at Vito Remote Sensing Department. We also offer services, or just web services, time series services, uh, Jupyter notebooks, virtual machines, and uh, last but not least, the uh, OpenEO uh, API. Therefore, it's an enabling platform. It enables you to work on uh, on your algorithms or, or what you want to do with Earth observation data uh, while providing you all, all these tools. It is open for everyone, and it is free. It's mostly funded by the Belgian uh, Federal Science Policy Office. Um, so what makes it stand out? We, we have analysis ready data uh, here at Terrascope. It's pre-processed, atmospherically corrected, uh, so you don't have to spend much time uh, with the data preparation part. It's in cloud-optimized geotiff format. 
Um, and uh, as I'm going to go over them anyway, uh, so we do offer a wide range of analysis tools and cloud processing capacity. So let's see what you can do with this platform. There are many tools available. Um, it depends a bit on, on your use case or how you want to use it. If you, for example, just want to, if you are new to it and want to just use the basic functionality, if you just want to explore the satellite data or, or see land cover changes or, or, for example, see comparison of, of, a, of the images or products for a given area, you can do so by the Terrascope viewer, uh, which is a web user interface. You can also download data through that web interface or through our catalog. If you want to take it a step further and, and do analysis in your own application or in your GIS environment, you can connect those two. You can take data from our catalog or use our web services. And if you want to do even more advanced analysis, well, which doesn't have to be advanced or any kind of analysis, if you are a bit familiar with Python and, and uh, scripting, you can use the Jupyter Notebooks or OpenEO to, to do your own, uh, own implementation. I'm going to show some simple examples today. Uh, I believe it's the last session, and, and you will see that it's not as uh, scary as it sounds. We also offer uh, virtual machines where you can run your UI-based application. So if you want to use QGIS, Snap, it's all installed there. Data is already available there. You don't have to install anything. So this, this makes a lot of sense for a classroom setting um, where the teachers or the students, they don't have to bother with installing anything or bother with the IT aspect of it. Everything is ready. You just You just do your stuff. So let me quickly go through the Terrascope viewer. Um, so it's, a, like I said, a web application. You can access to this um, through this link. Um, on the left-hand side, you will see the satellites and the products that, uh, that are in that uh, satellite category. Uh, it allows you to browse the map and see various layers or products and, and uh, much more. So let's have a look at it. So this is uh, the Sao Miguel Island, I believe, on Azores. Um, so we are looking at the Sentinel-2 color image here for uh, uh, 4th of, or 5th of April, which was one of the few uh, rather less cloudy days because I, I discovered a lot of clouds in Azores. Um, so this is one of the clear images. Um, we also have the water products available. So here we are looking at um, an area again in Azores, um, the chlorophyll A concentration. Um, here you can see some inland water bodies, which seems to have some algae bloom uh, uh, problems. Um, these water products are already available in our catalog, but um, through the viewer interface, I believe it will be available to the public in a few days. Um, you will be able to see chlorophyll I A concentration. You will be able to, able to see the suspended matter and then the turbidity uh, properties of water. Um, so moving on, um, I did mention that it's possible to compare two images side by side. So for somebody who wants to have a glance at it, um, at this example, we are comparing the same product. So this is a Sentinel to color image uh, between two different dates. So you can see how the land cover changes. Another example here is for Azores. We are comparing for the same date, um, two different products. One is the, again, Sentinel-2 color image on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, the turbidity. You can see the turbidity, the, the fine lines in the water, whereas it's difficult to see it in the Sentinel-2 color image. Um, so this is all very possible to do via the user interface. And if you want to make some fancy time lapses, it's also possible. You can choose the images. Um, you can you can choose them based on the the cloudiness of the image, or I think I filtered out quite a bit here because it was a lot of clouds. Um, the next one you can also work in an area of interest. So you can draw a polygon, and you can see the trends. So um, here, I see the the time series for NDVI for this given for this polygon, and in the next one. I'm showing the NDVI and also the CropSAR. CropSAR is, is, is fusing um, the Sentinel-2 images with Sentinel-1 data, so it is able to look through the clouds, basically. Um, so that's also available through the user interface. 
if however you want to or you insist on downloading data that is some, something you can do um, however take note that the images are quite large you can see one image is uh, one tile is almost 700 or, or sometimes one gigabyte um, so that's possible to download next let's see what is available there as data on the platform we have a sentinel one data from 2015 to present but this is however for belgium and and surroundings uh, and derived products from Sentinel-1 data is also available. We have Sentinel-2 for uh, Europe, Africa, and, and some parts of Asia. It's a two-year rolling archive. Um, again, we have the top of the canopy data, as well as the vegetation indicators, biophysical parameters like uh, NDVI, LAI, FAPAR, F-cover, CCC, and the water products, um, the chlorophyll A, turbidity, suspended matter. Um, we have Sentinel 5P data, the NO2 and CO from 2018 uh, to present, globally available. We have the whole archive of Probo V because we were the Probo V mission exploitation platform. Um, we have the full archive of Spot Vegetation, as well as the Copernicus Global Land Service and the Copernicus Digital Elevation Model. Um, these are all available directly from the Periscope platform. Now, if you want to take it uh, a bit further, as I mentioned, if you want to, for example, implement your services or your algorithms, that's perfectly possible through Terrascope. Um, I pro recommend to do so via OpenEO and Jupyter Notebooks. And having said that, let me describe what OpenEO is. OpenEO is, a, is an application programming interface that, um, that connects to different backends like R, Python, JavaScript uh, in a simple and unified way. It started as a Horizon 2020 project, it, which completed last year, but there's currently an ongoing project with uh, European Space Agency. Uh, there are many partners involved with this, and there's quite uh, uh, active development ongoing for OpenEO. Uh, the challenge that OpenEO is trying to address is that uh, if you look at the old fashioned way of Earth observation processing is that you download the data to your local environment, you try to process it there, which is okay maybe for some small areas, but it's not uh, suitable for, for doing a lot of processing. Then the next thing is when we move to the cloud, like on one hand we have Amazons, on the other hand we have Diasis, you still have to have some IT knowledge because what you do on Amazon will not be the same as what you will be able to do on Diasis. Different Cloud providers have different platforms, different way of cataloging the data. In any case, you will have to have IT knowledge. With OpenEO, though, because it provides a standard interface and makes it easy for you to uh, also develop your algorithm, you are able to um, deploy your algorithm on one cloud provider, assuming they have OpenEO, and you can easily move it to another one if the other one also has OpenEO. Sorry, and before you continue, just uh, yeah. because we are run out of time and we want uh -huh. also the discussion with the speakers, with the audience, sure. uh, please, please close your presentation like with two, three sentences and then we resume in the hands on session when you can continue with the rest. All right. So, OK, uh, I believe this was one of the last slides uh, anyway. So with open your it's it's a couple of lines of code to say I want a time series of median uh, NDVI for these parcels between these dates, which I will be uh, presenting in the hands-on session anyway. And it offers many other uh, tools out of the box, uh, functions and processes that you can use in your algorithm implementation. Um, so this is just a screenshot of the virtual machines, what it looks like, the data is already there, the tools are already installed and it's ready to be used. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, You're thank welcome. Thank you very much <laughs> to all of you. Uh, these are the brains behind the tools, just to just to mention that as well. Thank you very much uh, for your explanation on uh, on the benefits and what are they about. Um, 
before we go to the hands-on session, and because I received many questions, what is this this hands-on session? It's actually uh, around 40 minutes. Uh, the partners will show us how we can use this uh, data, this tool. So we will share with you password, uh, the credentials, and you can log in uh, in these tools, and you can try it. You can test them in real time with them. Uh, this is this is all about, um, but maybe uh, before we go into that, um, uh, it will be important to to uh, write us in the chat your questions, your comments, so we can um, we can share them with the EO4GO uh, developers at this stage, the EO4GO partners, and maybe because the workshop is hosted by by the Azores. I can uh, in, I could I could invite Arthur to uh, to share with us any questions uh, he might have. Meanwhile, please, uh, especially students and academia, put your questions in the chat. Thank you. Okay, Margarita, thank you. I, I, will, I would like to take advantage of having here um, representatives from the academia, from the public sector, and from the private sector as. Uh, uh, respectively, Ana Martins, Francisco Valenstein, and Pedro Freire da Silva, and ask them the following question. Uh, to what extent do you think that the EO4G solution uh, could apply to the needs of the Azores and, and, and specifically your institution or company? May I go first? Because please. I will need to leave soon. Yes, I please, Francisco, so. please. With I think they will be very useful tools in the in the endeavor that I'm uh, uh, stepping in to to include uh, Earth observation in in education. At least, well, I'm not going to use it, of course, because I'm not working in education. But I'm surely going to disseminate it and try to 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 promote it because it seems very interesting and very useful for for the, the educational system. In the region, so in my endeavor of of promoting the uptake of Copernicus of Earth observation uh, in education, I will surely use it. I think it's very, very useful and very, very, very good tool. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Francisco. Anna, any feedback on this? Um, yes, uh, I totally agree with uh, Francisco. Um, it's uh, it's uh, sometimes you're on your own, doing your own classes, doing your own. Uh, syllabus for the students and I think this is a very very nice opportunity to show them even to suggest that later on and some pro process of development they could also be future uh, putting their own um, also skills on the tools and trying to improve so most certainly I, I look this um, I, I'm definitely going to I didn't know before these tools uh, as you know, I'm definitely now interested to explore and even if I can uh, suggest uh, something in uh, in these tools. Another thing is, I think there is a there is a chance that you may slowly begin to talk about these on the high school, for example, level, higher level, and that's something I think I don't know if you do it before, you have done it before, but I think it would be interesting to uh, younger students because they're very willing to learn, and sometimes it's less scary for those students to have some information about earth observation tools. But of course, I don't know that. I'm not teaching high school, but at university level, I think it would be very nice even to give a class about them entering, using, and, and exploring better these tools. And most definitely will be helpful for the, the professors at, uh, as well. Thank you, Anna. Pedro, any thoughts on this? Um, I, I do agree also with... Uh, what Anna was saying, indeed, uh, these tools can be useful, and um, it's it's a question of exploring them and uh, trying to identify for for each of the lines of activities that we have, and um, understand if they can be applied directly and even uh, with all the, the partners that um, that we are working within the network, uh, also disseminate these these tools. So. Um, not only on the technical side, but on a more, say, uh, scientific diplomacy and dissemination side, we can definitely advertise the tools within the network as a Dear Center, as a network organization with all the partners um, can definitely contribute. 
Maybe someone, thank you very much. Someone from the audience, I see that there are some uh, a chat going on. Um, but feel free, especially students uh, or uh, um, employers to, to share your comments with us. It doesn't have to be a, a question necessarily. Uh, I see that my colleagues uh, reply to them. So, and it's also important, um, uh, very interesting that we have an international interest uh, for our tools, as you can see. Yeah. Um, I will, uh, Margaret, uh, just let me ask also to the EO, EO4GO developers. Uh, uh, yes. They didn't know, uh, they didn't know the Zorin context. Uh, uh, now they, uh, they are familiar with it, with the presentation of Francisco, Pedro, and, uh, and Anna. Uh, uh, how do you think uh, that we could maximize the potential of using the EO4GO tools? Um, uh, taking into account the, the, the specific context of the Azores and, and the academia, the public sector, and the, and the small uh, companies uh, that dominate in the Azores uh, economy. Brian or uh, Rob? Yeah, I, I can say something uh, on behalf of, uh, let's say, the uh, body of knowledge uh, creation and use um, as such. Um, as I mentioned in, in my short presentation, uh, we are still seeking for uh, support to uh, improve the content of the body of knowledge. And, and therefore, um, it is very useful to have uh, what we call domain knowledge. So also uh, in the field of um, marine applications and, and actually any other application, but also uh, on generic uh, concepts that are generically applicable like uh, raster calculations, um, uh, image processing, uh, artificial intelligence methods. Uh, all of those of you who are knowledgeable about this uh, can help us to improve uh, and which will be again for the benefit of, uh, let's say, the users, which is also amongst you and ourselves. Thank yeah. you, Florian. I, um, yeah, my, my thought um, goes in the same line. I just posted the um, website uh, with the link to the call for experts so you can register for contributing to the body of knowledge. Um, so this is ongoing work that we have there. And after our project is finished, we try to push that further and keep the um, body of knowledge active and also the community to contribute um, shall be active and um, the more people that participate in this endeavor also from from the applications side from the users um, so through the job of a tool and the curriculum design tool from academia um, this will help making this usable and um, getting more experience about also for us, more experience about how the tools actually work in practice and how well they um, perform. And then we then we can improve them even more and um, make this a uh, um, tool for exchange that uh, we know quite early what kind of um, skills are needed um, in the um, changing market and can adapt our um, our curricula to that. Thank you. Okay, Aida, any additional thought? No, I agree what, with what they said. Uh, the more content and the better content we have in the tools, the more benefits we will get. And also more benefits we'll get the, the sector. Okay, thank you all. Margarita? Um, I'm just checking the questions in the chat, uh, so I don't see any new. Maybe at this moment, because uh, we are already um, a bit delayed in time, um, I could share uh, the links. We, we can, we can um, if you don't have any other comments from your side, uh, from the speakers and for uh, uh, from the from the audience, maybe we can uh, launch the the hands-on session.
if you if you agree on that and we can continue our discussion after the the hands-on session but it's important to have uh, already from the beginning this feedback uh, from regional authorities um, and from um, other representatives of the of the sectors okay then um, I will share with you the the links for uh, and the passwords. So these are in the chat. Uh, I believe that we first start uh, with the educational offers, um, right? So uh, there the participants can click on the link. They can um, insert the username and the password. And in real, and they can um, see in real time uh, how they can uh, uh, use the tool together with the uh, together with the presenters, together with the um, EO for Geo partners. Uh, yes, Rob, please. Um, so I thought we we would start with the book tools, and then first the natural order is the living textbook first, and then the EO for Geo. Okay. Geo yes we we start with the book tools first and uh, the ones that you um shared are for the e for the eo the eo tools, tools you mean yeah. yes okay okay so, but um, still valid but uh after the no we start we start with the book tools so please keep that in um for for when 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 we finish with the book tools we continue with the the other tools so you i can uh, repeat it again so you can connect uh, yes, I leave it up to you then. Um, yeah, Rob. That, that's correct, uh, isn't it, Ida? Yes, 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 yes. As we, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I will then uh, share the, the other uh, credentials that these are here that you need for this. Um, and I only have 10 minutes with you, so I'm, I'm going through it. Um, in a bit of a high pace, but um, the documentation is there, so you can still follow and, and continue with it uh, after uh, this uh, very short hands on. But at least you have the um, credentials here for the first part. I will also share my screen. Um, yes, that would be perfect. Yeah, I... that would be perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, Francisco, for your uh, feedback and your uh, participation. It's our pleasure. Okay. okay. Yeah, can you see this uh, slide? Yes. 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 Yeah. So okay. for the students of the audience, maybe now it's a um, it's a chance that you can really uh, dive into the uh, the tools and make your questions after the end of the hands-on. Yeah. Please. So uh, this is actually the same information as I just uh, I copied in the chat. So the, the uh, link to the living textbook where you find uh, the book uh, is in here. So ltb.itc.u20.nl. And then you could uh, access uh, the body of knowledge without logging in. But if you want to add it, uh, and we have created a safe environment for you, what we call a kind of a sandbox or, or playground uh, with which you can edit uh, freely. So don't worry if you um, mess up things, your delete uh, concepts doesn't matter because this is the not the official one, but a copy of it, okay? So uh, then uh, feel free to, to do things that you like there. Uh, and to log in, you have to use uh, this um, email address, ltbexplorer at gmail.com and the password is demo with a capital D1234. And you have to add, it, uh, add this into the uh, local account screen. And then um, you will see uh, this menu, select a study area, although you also see that without logging in. So if you, see, if you want to access this without logging in, it's okay. Uh, the only difference is that you cannot edit, but only view which is also perfectly fine, uh, I think, for now. Uh, and then you open the dashboard, and then what you will see is a screen like this. Um, so uh, you can explore living textbook and edit it. And there's a hands-on uh, instruction link there. 
which I will now go to the actual living textbook and go to that particular screen with you. So that one is here. Uh, just uh, to get some confirmation, can you see the living textbook now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I will just uh, cl close it for uh, the time being. I'm going to the start screen. And then you see this screen if, if you actually enter this environment. And then here is the uh, click here for hands on instructions. And then you will get a, a PDF document which you can go through. And I will go through it with you now uh, quickly to start you up uh, to see uh, how things are working. Uh, but this document uh, remains uh, available for you uh, after the workshop, so you can go through it uh, to explore yourself. And it's, it's very short, so it, it, it's just, uh, let's say, uh, 30 minutes that, that uh, you can see uh, what is behind it and in the living textbook. So I open the map again. Um, and then the first thing, uh, what, what you need to know is that uh, you, you can explore this concept map. Uh, you see th that there's quite a, a huge uh, environment with, with all kinds of concepts, uh, but uh, you have to learn a little bit how to navigate. So if you um, put your mouse into uh, a gray area, you can pan the map. And with your um, scroll wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, if you are putting your mouse over a certain uh, circle, so a concept, then it will highlight itself plus the concepts that are around it. So you see the, the context of that specific concept. If I click on it once, then you see the text on the left-hand side uh, in this window, and you can also drag uh, to, to see more text and to see less of the, the concept map. Um, so you see a description, of uh, the particular text or the, the concept, uh, the external resources, so the literature where uh, this text was actually derived from, uh, not copied, but derived, and the skills uh, that are used uh, for the other tools that Ida is going to show you um, for uh, curriculum development, uh, for job matching. And so these are uh, used and copied into the other tools. Um, here you see also a bit of uh, in, insight into um, our own work status. So this is that means that this concept has been completed uh, within the project. We also have uh, quite some concepts that are still uh, under consideration uh, and um, are being worked on. So they, these also have uh, such a status. We also here see uh, the different contributors uh, who have worked on the particular content of this concept. Um, so uh, what we can do is, is to uh, search, for instance, and then uh, a very nice thing to do uh, is to uh, go to this particular uh, menu here, and we say, for instance, water, and then it will find all the concepts out of these 900 which are related to water. Uh, let's go, for instance, to uh, water quality variables. And if I click then on this one, it will automatically zoom in to the context of that uh, particular concept. Uh, I can then uh, click on it, get the information on the left-hand side. Um, and I, I can also move the, the concept a bit, maybe if I want to, to uh, make a screen dump of this and, and to show it to others. Um, and here you see also uh, the relationships. So if I go to this one, uh, it's a leaf area index. It's a particular concept, IP3112. Uh, it says it's a sub-concept of uh, biophysical and geophysical parameters. Uh, so this creates the hierarchy that you can also see uh, in the other tools, also shown by Ida later, uh, where you see these small circles in bigger circles. So th this is also creating uh, this hierarchy. Another way to... Uh, search is uh, to search for the complete text uh, in uh, the whole body of knowledge. So it's not only the concepts, these 900, but there's of course loads of content uh, on the left-hand side in the text, in the definitions and so on. Uh, so I can uh, do a, a complete text search here, like for instance, uh, looking for marine. 
Um, and then uh, you see here that every concept is highlighted, uh, which contains at least uh, the, the term marine. Uh, so here I end, uh, for instance, up with many concepts. Uh, but here's the one that also was highlighted uh, by Florian earlier. Uh, monitor the marine ecosystem. And if I want to uh, see that in my concept map, I can click again on concept map. And I see here uh, the particular concept uh, in the, the context uh, of uh, this particular. Um, um, if I want to highlight and uh, I can zoom out a bit and uh, then I see that this concept is related to many other concepts and I've created, I've highlighted yellow just for the purpose of this workshop so that uh, we can find it also back easily. Um, and you see, for instance, here that uh, it also has a sub relation um, or with services and um, um, applications. But here you see also um, the fact that we are still working on it. Uh, there's a proposed relation with Earth observation missions, which has to be worked out further uh, by the experts within uh, the project. And that's uh, particularly here why we also ask your um, interest to help us with um, supporting uh, and creating uh, the improved uh, concept uh, map here. Um, I have to look at the time. I think um, to, to not to go over time, I would like to end here. Uh, what, what I have done is um, basically uh, went through part one of the tutorial. That is the PDF that I showed you in the beginning. Uh, part two is actually uh, giving information about editing. Uh, so I, I could uh, just briefly show you uh, if I click on this concept, Monitor Marine, I click here on Edit, and then it will open up uh, the editing environment uh, for this particular concept. And you see uh, the fields that are containing, uh, for instance, the, the text the definition. Uh, I, I could uh, yeah, change this text. Uh, I can also change other parts of it, uh, add skills, for instance, that you see listed here. And I can also change the relationships, the arrows uh, in uh, this particular concept. Map. So you are free to uh, play around with this particular copy of the environment to get uh, to know uh, how the book uh, looks and, and how it basically works. So with this, I think I need to end here. And, Thank you uh, very much, Rob, yeah, for this fantastic. To, okay, to Ida. For this fantastic presentation, and uh, yeah, Ida, uh, please share your presentation. Um, I think it would be very, very interesting for companies your uh, uh, your part. So um, maybe Can whoever. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes, no. very clear. Okay, so um, I pasted in the chat the the links to the to the tools and this one here, the bog.eo4geo.eu, is where the where the last uh, official version of the body of knowledge is and it's uh, publicly available. You can uh, browse through it. So uh, I will, uh, for example, browse for marine concepts. And uh, the one that Rob was showing in the in the living textbook is this one here. So we see here in the in the graphical view where this concept is, and we see it under the thematic and application domains knowledge area. So we can either click in, in the in the graphic and it scrolls to the all the marine matching concepts, or we can scroll. Uh, and we, we can link, we can uh, take the link and go directly to the one we need. So this one, for example, is the one that Rob was showing. And we see that it has these skills in here. We, we also see that this is in version 5 of the body of knowledge and that the, this concept also exists in version 4 and in version 3, but it doesn't exist in version 2. So, for example, if we go to the oldest version of this concept, we get a warning here that this is the old version and we see that this one didn't have any skills. So this concept has been worked and 
some skills were, were added to it. So we go back to the current version. And we see it here, these skills. So for example, later in the curriculum design tool, which you have there the link and more information in the official web page of the project, we could, for example, uh, take this course of sat satellite oceanography, edit it, and, uh, and we can reuse uh, the content of the book in, in, as I said before, in the description, in the learning outcomes. Uh, this time we can, uh, we can uh, annotate it with the, with the marine concept I was showing you before. So you search, you find the one you you want, and if you see this is the one, you click on annotate. And now this concept is annotated to the to the first note of the tree. We can save and exit. And if you if you see it here, uh, the title changed because the this is the main one. And it changes with the concept, but we can click here in the different notes of the tree of the educational offer, and we can see which learning outcomes, which prerequisites, and which content from the book it has. So you can click and explore. In the job offer, it's the same. We can edit a job offer or create a new job offer, and you you search for knowledge and skills uh, related to, uh, you you need to have in uh, to to do this job so for example here we find the same marine and we click on add and it says you added a, a concept and six related skills so these are the skills that are related to this to this concept. Monitor Marine is the last one we added, and it has these related skills. So all of them are now associated to the job offer. If we think uh, they are not needed, for example, icebergs are not needed, so we can remove it. And you can also uh, create your custom skills. Here you add it, and they get uh, link it to the job offer. So the the content is saved here and everyone can everyone can check it. So later in the bug matching tool, as we said before, let me reload. We can search for the, the job offer and the educational offer we, we created. This one. And here we want to compare job offers, for example. Uh, so we click on job offers, but we also have training materials, occupational and other resources that are annotated with the annotation tool, which you will find more information in the project website. And we can order by matching score. We see that this one has 83% of, of matching because I just added one concept that is matching in both resources, which is this monitor marine. So we see they are com it is common in, the, in both resources, so it increases the matching. And these are the ones that are not matching and um, I think uh, we can now uh, go to uh, to the next hands-on session we can stop here the the work user tools but if you have any if you have any question you can always call us so thank you very much uh, Aida and Rob uh, for the presentation of the book tools um, and how we can use them. Maybe I, I will stop here for some minutes and ask uh, the audience if they have any questions and uh, moreover the, um, the stakeholders from the Azores. Uh, do you think that these tools um, uh, can um, be adapted in your organization? Are you willing to use them? Uh, for your organization, 
uh, are they easily adapted to your uh, daily uh, pro business um, processes activities? Uh, maybe we can have one, two comments here before we go into the hands on session for the EO tools and then we can close the, the workshop. Um, Mar Margarita, you specifically asked more the stakeholders, but um, as um, as a stakeholder from academia, let's say, I think these are very interesting tools. And also, what I've seen, it it's, it really is a world of exploration. So I think we can also uh, the idea is also to 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 help to improve them somehow. But also, um, I had some some just a question related with how can we add only as an expert, or we can actually it's more active that you can write there. For example, I was just looking now at euphotic death, and there's nothing about euphotic death as far as I could see. And so could we add these? Is it easy to add? Or you have to be an expert uh, approved in order to add something on these tools? That's I, I didn't, I couldn't understand very well. Yeah, maybe I can comment on this. Um, so, and I, uh, you, you can um, use the link that, that Florian uh, was uh, pasting in the chat. Uh, so to register yourself as an expert and then, um, you will be uh, allocated to a working group where uh, specific uh, knowledge domains are uh, discussed. We have seven working groups uh, with different working um, areas, knowledge areas, uh, and then um, it, it, you will just start to connect to, to the other experts, to the peers there, and there will be a connection uh, to to discuss uh, if you, for instance, need want to add a concept that is, will be also discussed. Um, and nowadays, we also work with uh, specific calls for specific concepts uh, that we need um, uh, some priority on. Um, and then uh, also we will look at, uh, let's say, the group of experts and, and also know some of their expertise, because that's also asked when you register. Uh, where your expertise lies. So if that is the case, and, and you are, for instance, the, the one that, that has the expertise on one particular topic, then it's likely that, that you will be asked to, uh, let's say, uh, engage there. But if you want to propose that a specific concept uh, is to be added, uh, that is indeed possible if you are in, in uh, that working group. And every working group has a working group leader uh, so that will be a very short uh, line uh, to that uh, particular uh, uh, concept. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? We haven't heard any student, and that's weird because we have a lot of uh, students registered to the to the workshop by now. Uh, okay, then uh, if you have any comments, please um, uh, put it in the chat, and then um, uh, we will share them with the with the participants. So now uh, maybe Andy can um, also show us the how we can use the EO tools. Uh, maybe either uh, you can um, show the most important items of this presentation and anyway um, we have uh, left we have uh, shared the credentials with uh, uh, in the chat so if anyone is interested to further explore that he can do it after they can do it after the after the workshop we really need to be fast because uh, we are close to the end of the workshop so um, this is the last presentation from our side. Uh, please. Andrew. All right. Um, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Fine. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I will have to change plans a bit <laughs> um, to adjust it to the time. Um, so I plan to show you two uh, notebook examples, one a simple example and one more detailed example tailored for Azores. Um, so I will go a bit faster. Um, let me first start. Where do you find these uh, notebooks? So you go. You have to go to the. Uh, let me close these windows. Um, to terascope.be, you can log into Terascope using your Edugain account or or your um, social accounts. So those are all possible. 
And once you log in, uh, your accounts will be linked and you will be able to use the notebooks. So to use the notebooks, you go to notebooks.terascope.be. I put that in the chat window. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you will have some samples already out of the box. And we provide also samples. The samples that I'm showing you now is all available on GitHub. I provided the, the link in the chat window. So I was going to do this uh, by hand. I, mean, I was going to type the code, but maybe I shouldn't lose time doing that. And I'm just going to walk you through the code instead of typing it. Um, the first step would be to okay, create your notebook and choose a Python uh, 3.6 in this case. That's what I have chosen for these examples. And once you do that, you get an empty notebook. Um, but I um, don't have time to do that now. So I'll just start with this simple example of how to do a band math. So in this example, I'm going to calculate an enhanced vegetation index. Um, the first step is to, yeah, I'm going to use OpenEO for it. So I import the OpenEO library and, and then I authenticate. So these are all things that you can copy paste uh, from the examples. Oh, sorry, <laughs> my session is time out. Um, once you authenticate, uh, the next step would be that you create a data cube. So for my data cube, basically I'm loading a collection of from Terascope Sentinel to top of the canopy collection. I restrict it to one day and I choose two band, three bands. So this is going to be my data cube. Once I have my data cube, I will be uh, filtering it to my area of interest. In this case, it was uh, an area in Azores. So maybe I can just uh, continue run, run. So the good thing about Jupyter Notebooks is, of course, you can combine code and text and equations and images, etc. cetera. Oh, so I, I wanted to hide this. Um, this shows the list of collections. Um, so we have the data cube, we filter it to, my, to Azuris, and then I can download the raw image that I'm getting. So this is the, the, the image that I, I haven't touched yet. I didn't change anything. This, of course, triggers the back end and, and it will do some progress processing. So it might take a couple of minutes. It's ready. Um, next, I can just uh, run and, and uh, display the image that I have retrieved. So it's one of those, uh, I believe, uh, volcanic lakes uh, that are available in, in Azores. Um, so this is, uh, this is the raw data. Now let's calculate the enhanced vegetation index. What I'm doing is from my data cube, I extract my bands again. Uh, um, I believe these are blue, red, and, and uh, infrared bands. You can extract them and assign them as variables. And once you have that, you just apply the formula, just like a mathematical formula to each band. And, and this will be your uh, enhanced vegetation index. And I'm now downloading the image that, uh, that will come as band math example in GeoTIFF format. Um, it's finished. I have my example here. Uh, on the left hand side, I can see it and and you run it and then you can see so you can you can create your your, your own indexes uh, following your own algorithms. So this is uh, the basic example of how to do this. So this is uh, I find it quite suitable for for a, for a classroom setting, for example. The next example is is uh, is tailored for Azure. So what we wanted to do is here to show the the, the chlorophyll A concentrations on the lake furnace, which apparently is having an issue with the algae bloom. Um, so for this example, again, the same. I import OpenEO, I authenticate, and then I download the cloud mask from Sentinel Hub. So this tells me the, the probability of clouds for each pixel that we have. Next, um, here I'm defining a function. Later, I will use this to, to get rid of the the data that uh, that is too cloudy, basically. So here I'm saying if anything is less than 5% uh, or more than 5% cloudy, that can be filtered out. So the lake furnace. Um, all right, so this is where the, ex, uh, the real job begins. Um, what I'm doing is, again, creating a data cube here using the Terascope chlorophyll A concentration data. Um, I'm specifying a temporal range here. And then I'm merging it with the Sentinel Hub Cloud Mask data cube. So it aligns the two, two cubes to each other. You don't have to do anything. So it's just one line of code. All the pixels will be aligned. And once you have that, using the, the masking function that I created above, I can reduce the dimension and get rid of the data. Uh, so this is where it's happening, basically. The next uh, 
so my goal was to to plot it as a line graph the chlorophyll concentration which means i need to aggregate the spatial data uh, by using a function uh, a medium function in this case in the furnace like uh, geometry so it'll be i think i didn't run these maybe i should start running run 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 uh, it will catch up so this last item is where we are doing the actual work. Okay. And uh, so this might take a minute or two. And when that is done, we will be able to, yeah, we get the result as a JSON and we convert it to pandas for, uh, yeah, is easiness. And, and I can plot the values as such and which will give me a, a, a line graph. Of course, this, what I'm doing here is a technology demonstration and it, it may not be super scientific. I mean, yeah, because uh, yeah, that was not our goal here. But um, so with, with 10 cells or even less that you're able to get uh, such a data. It's, there's another approach that we could have used. It's a net CDF, you can download it and mask it and, and uh, you can have a, a similar graph using this, which is a bit less noisy, and you can plot the data again day by day. Um, so I try to rush it a bit. I'm sorry about that, but uh, um, the examples are available. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at Vito. I will also um, put my um, uh, my email address in the chat. So if you have any questions later, you can al always. Uh, um, yeah, reach us. There is a question. Am I pulling the satellite image directly from the satellite? The, no, the satellite images that I used here in this one. Um, so I got the cloud mask from Sentinel Hub. The data was available at Sentinel Hub and we have a connection to Sentinel Hub through OpenEO. That's where I got the cloud mask data and actual image data is, is hosted in Terasco. So in this case, this, I used the chlorophyll, uh, uh collection. And that is already available there in this data center. So that's why there is no delay of transferring the data. That's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ande, for being so uh, in time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know it's difficult, but you know, when you have such a, such a lot of interest from the audience and you receive so many questions, it's, it's normal to, to, um, to be a bit delay in the, in the timing. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe before we close, uh, one last, uh, two, three minutes more to ask you, uh, if you, if you have any questions or comments to the EO4GEO partners, um, regarding the the tools do you think that uh, do you think that these tools are user friendly because this uh, session was about how to use them uh, so please feel free to write in the chat or uh, to i i see also that we have participants from other regions other regional authorities so also feel free to share your comments with uh, with us Okay, uh, Margarita, yes. since nobody yes. spoke, I probably would just have one small comment. Yes, it's Anna, say, please, please, uh, please. Just say that the tools that were presented before by Robin, Ida, and also Florian, they were very, very um, interesting. And, and uh, as I said, I think they are, um, uh, first of all, they are freely available and they also are very, um, they're not difficult to use. It's just exploring them a little bit. So I think for even at the level of students, it's a very nice, um, uh, are very nice tools. What Hande showed, I have to be honest, I loved it. I certainly want to use it. <laughs> I would, I don't think they're at the level of a person who does not understand even some, uh, some small 
concepts of remote sensing. So it has to be somebody who was exposed to that. But most certainly, Handy, I'll be very contacting you because, for example, you're showing some of the chlorophyll, some of those milligrams per cubic meter. I thought, oh my God, they're really high. And so I'll be very interested in, in a, a possible collaboration for in situ validation with um, what we have in, in terms, and particularly in terms of coastal. We are not looking at the lagoons. Some colleagues here are. And and probably they would be interested. I don't know if they are here, but for validation purposes would be very nice because we don't have much match up and validation for Sentinel two. But again, all of them were incredible, and most certainly for me, in the sense as a, as a teacher, academia, researcher, I'll be using all of them. So thank you very much. It was very nice. Thank you very much, uh, Anna, and uh, uh, don't worry because you will have Hande, Rob, uh, Florian, Aida, uh, and Marcus in the next workshops in uh, Poland in autumn. So uh, we will oh, have the chance okay. to enjoy them uh, in few months as well. So as I am, I am the communication officer. I also have to promote this workshop. So again, please find the link to register. Um, well, the good oh. news is you don't have to wait until October. You can also <laughs> just reach out to us uh, in the meantime. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> indeed, indeed. That's true. Okay. Um, Arthur, would you like to 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 share something with us before before I we I close the meeting? No, I just I just want to highlight that it was. Um, a very uh, a difficult workshop to organize because of the pandemics. It was supposed to be presential last year. Uh, we, we we were hoping to to organize it presential this in year. In the Azores. Yeah, in the Azores, of course. Uh, unfortunately, it was not possible. It was it was great to 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 collaborate with the Nereus, with Margarita, with Hoya, with the EO for Geo developers. Uh, in order to organize this workshop, that uh, that was uh, really useful, and and with the recording, uh, uh, we will have um, a, a very important output for the future as well uh, for people that was not uh, that were not able to participate. So it it, it will be a, a very good uh, a, a dissemin a, a dissemination product, and it it was very important uh, for me. It was the first time that I saw it. Uh, it was it was important to 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 put together the the public, the private, and the academic sectors in the Azores regarding the coastal and, and, and maritime sectors and the impact of Earth observation and geographic information um, if, uh, information uh, skills, workforce, human resources. Uh, uh, to improve this whole sector in the in the in the region that uh, that is so important. So uh, thank you very much to the eo 4 geo Consortium for trusting us, and and and, and thank you very much to to, to Margarita Hoya and Reus uh, 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 for doing such a great job of communication and moderation. Um, and it was a pleasure to gather uh, and to collaborate with you. Thank you for your kind words, Arthur. I'm very touched, I have to say, and thank you also on, the, on behalf of the Nereus team. Um, so also from my side, I would like to thank all participants who joined the webinar and stayed till the end of this uh, uh, long workshop, the speakers, uh, for offering these tailor-made presentations. And believe me, it's a, it's a work of months. Um, and the University of the Azores, of course, and Arthur uh, for this excellent collaboration. I really couldn't imagine a better one. Uh, of course, there will be a follow up of the workshop in the Nereus uh, website in the following days. Uh, and we will share, of course, the follow up in your um, in your with your emails. Of course, you may contact us if you have any other questions. Please, a last reminder, fill in the quality assessment form. I, I shared the link at the end of the chat. Um, and uh, it's important for us to know how we can be improved in terms of uh, organizing workshops, speakers, and so on. Um, and uh, what else? Thank you very much and wish you a great uh, summer break. <laughs> Goodbye to everyone. Thank you very bye, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.
Obrigado a todos. Obrigado, obrigado. Bye bye. Okay, maybe we can close the recording.